People who have visited the US. What is your WTF America story? Las Vegas, like two minutes from the strip is the ghetto. Such a contrasting view of abject poverty and overindulgence just minutes away from one another. Everyone was so nice. Why are all the meal portions so big? The bathroom stall gap is real. Everyone hates the stall gap. Moved to the US with my family in the mid 90s and started high school my junior year. Back home in Norway I had played basketball for a few years, enjoyed it and thought I'd try out for the school team, thinking it would be like home. Practice once or twice a week for an hour and a game against Antha school once in a while. Yeah, not so much. Quickly realized sports is a huge deal in the US. I made JV. There were a couple other JRS on the team so I didn't sweat it. The first practice went on for 2, 5 hours and I was pretty nauseous after all the suicide running drills and numerous other exercises. Realizing I hadn't asked too many details beforehand, I asked a teammate how often practice was, and was promptly shocked to find out we had practice 4 times a week for 2 2. 5 hours plus 2 games per week, and that was JV. Suffice to say the coming months were quite exhausting and didn't leave much time for anything else. We did place first in our state though, and I got whipped into shape pretty good. So yeah, you Americans don't mess around when it comes to sports. We may not like to exercise for health's sake, but we do not lose at anything. I was in Florida and the amount of car wrecks in front yards was baffling. As long as it has headlights, seat belts, and a license plate you can drive it in Florida. I saw the guy with a piece of rope instead of a driver's side door once. So those weren't car wrecks, they were that person's main method of transportation. I went to downtown Philadelphia during a 5 hour layover, ate a cheesesteak, then witnessed a terrible and completely random midday fight on the street. For me, it's always sunny has been proven the best depiction of Philly. Me and my girlfriend visited from England and we were walking down the street when a homeless guy passed us and said to me, Brother, if she ain't your sister, then you're doing all right. Wasn't a homeless guy, that's just good ole like creepy Eddie. Going to an NHL game seemed like I was at an eating event. Also 9 chicken McNuggets costing about $4.10 and 20 costing $4.50. Not sure about the exact costs but you get the idea. Keep up the good work on that English. I'm from Scotland. I worked costumer service in college. This young cashier comes up and says she cannot understand this guy and he is getting mad. Speaking Russian or something. Behind her I hear damn it woman I am Welsh. I got trapped in a McDonald's in Chicago on my first ever visit to the US because people were protesting the minimum wage. They barricaded everyone in the store. Was stuck there for something like 3 hours. My boss visited the US, recently on a business trip. He kept sending me photos and videos of how huge your trucks are and how many Ford Mustangs he kept seeing. He was giddy like a little kid in all his videos. I'm Australian. Went to this a few years ago, in a store, don't remember which, and get to the cashier. That's a weird accent. I'm Australian. Oh, no way. Do they really have that big boot like in The Simpsons? Disparaging the boot is a bootable offense. I live in Michigan. Husband is from the UK. His family and two best friends flew over for the wedding. We had a combined stag night bachelorette. We all went out and partied pretty hard. Toward the end of the night we were at a small bar in my tiny town and the locals were treating our British companions like celebrities. Overheard a girl tell my husband's mate, who is black, I didn't know they had your kind over there. I'm going to fly to the US, in a couple of weeks for the first time, already had a WTF moment, I had to fill out some personal stuff to get into the country, questions like, are you planning a genocide in the USA, yes or no, are you planning a terroristic attack in the USA, yes or no, I mean, if someone really is planning something like that and succeed, what then, he lied to us, how could he, he said he won't do a genocide and now look at that. I get that they can charge you for lying on an official paper but what's the point? He committed a genocide. 300 years jail and 1 month for lying? Or, death penalty for genocide and 1 whip on the bus of Furwoods for lying? 
Near the end of a vacation to the US I was feeling a bit guilty from eating so unhealthy. I ordered a salad at a restaurant and it came with complimentary ice cream. You cannot win against America. I was in NYC for New Year's Eve 2006 stroke 07. A guy next to me overheard I was Australian and grabbed my hand and told me he was praying for me due to the loss of Steve Irwin. Someone near us overheard and also joined in, so I, an Australian atheist with little care for Stephen Irwin, found myself in the midst of a small, but very enthusiastic, prayer circle. One summer some friends and I road tripped from Pennsylvania to Utah and back, 10,000 km in 2 weeks. Good times. We're from Canada so we're pretty used to Americanisms. However we found the stark contrast in billboards in the Bible Belt to be amusing. Every couple clicks it alternated between Jesus saves, confess your sins and xxx girls girls girls. Next exit. Seeing scripture on the back of transport trucks was pretty bizarre too. And the aggressive preachers on the radio. And the giant 50 foot crosses. Plural. I mean, it's called the Bible Belt for a reason, but I didn't really appreciate the scope until I was there. American are unreasonably nice. Road trip 15 years ago car breaks down on the freeway. Three cars stop, one guy fixes my car, one guy orders, and subsequently pays for, the part to fix the car and, third guy, his brother-in-law delivers it, all in about 30 minutes. Then we all go out for dinner and they buy me and my buddy dinner. The guy who fixed our car emails his cousins in Colorado. A week later we're having dinner and staying the night at their place. I hear WTF stories about America, but when I think of any of my WTF America stories, I have had nothing but amazing experiences. So, being Indonesian, world's largest Muslim country, and male, my dad always gets taken into a special room for interrogation every time we arrive in the US. When I happened to be with him, I got tired of waiting on my own. So I went to one of the officers guarding the area and asked how long it would take for my dad to get out. He went, oh my god, honey, you're all alone? And suddenly everyone was rushing to get my dad out as soon as possible, kept asking me if there was anything I needed, and kept telling me not to be scared. Obviously that made me actually nervous. What the frick is happening? Then I found out Americans just suck at telling Asian ages and apparently I looked 8 12. They thought they made my dad leave a child all alone in a foreign country. I was 16. Some of mine were. WTF. Why is there so much land everywhere? WTF. Why is everyone's house so big? WTF. Why are the roads so big? Explains why the cars are so big. WTF. Why is fuel, gas, so cheap? WTF. Why are strangers talking to me? WTF. Why is fruit so expensive? WTF. How can I get this much meat in a meal and it still costs less than $10? WTF. Why am I getting ID'd, carded, everywhere? WTF. No. To another person. I'm not Australian. I'm English. Damn it. When I was living in California back in the late 90s minus 2000, the news came on and announced that one of the stories would be NATO staffs bombing Kosovo. I turned the news up, only to have to sit through the more important story first. Out of season rain in LA. I was talking to a girl years ago about the US. It was around the 4th of July. I'm British. She's American. She wished me a happy the 4th of July. I told her we dawn. T celebrate that in the UK. She didn't know understand why. Just got back from Miami. Told a woman who was walking her cat that my girlfriend and I thought her cat was cute. She then told us she is not a prostitute. And nor was the cat. The portion sizes and prices of soda. Less WTF America more WTF why don't they sell this in the UK. State Fair of Texas. They were serving fried butter. A friend of mine lived in Virginia for some years for school and the locals. It was an average sized town, not some hillbilly crap hole. Asked him if we had cars, electricity, internet or fridges in Luxembourg. Mine was on the flight home. We just landed, and I overheard the following exchange. Mom, where are we? Amsterdam. It's in Germany. Well at one point in time she wasn't too wrong. This one isn't really negative. 
but still amazes me. I'm from Sweden and visited New York a few summers ago with my family. We had just gotten off the bus and my stepsister was feeling really nauseous from the bus ride. She walks up to a garbage can and takes a few deep breaths, trying to not vomit. Suddenly a guy in a suit with a briefcase walks up, asks if she's alright, tells her to wait there, and comes back a few seconds later with a bottle of water for her. Just a complete stranger. That's not something you'd see in Sweden. I went to the US this summer to work for my uncle's company in LA for 8 weeks. I'm currently studying at university in the UK. I decided to fly up to San Francisco to visit my cousin for the weekend and flew from LAX. After my return flight I was about to exit the LAX American terminal when all the police around me got their guns out and started shouting about a shooter at the airport. Chaos erupted around me with people everywhere throwing their suitcases to the floor and screaming. I had no idea what to do. I had just bought a tea from Starbucks and I didn't really want to throw it on the floor and run about so I followed this stampede of people through the terminal. I found a room to hide in with 20 other people. We all lay on the floor being quiet trying to stay calm. People all around me calling their loved ones saying their goodbyes. It was insane. I didn't have any service on my AT&T phone so I just sat there drinking tea contemplating what I would do if a gunman appeared. I realize now it was the most British thing to do at that moment. We were in there for 25 minutes when we got told it was clear. All of this happened because the police heard a loud noise and there was someone dressed as Zorro which raised suspicions. WTF America. They have bank drive throughs They go to the bank like they go to McDonald's. One summer when we visited some friends out in Tennessee and we're eating fresh deer he'd shot that afternoon off his BBQ. Drinking beer and sharing differences in culture. At which point out of nowhere he pulls out a pallet gun and shoots a squirrel from the top of a phone line. He then proceeded to cut, wash, clean and cook the squirrel. Tasted like chicken. I have no doubt that if there was a global apocalypse it might take Tennessee a few years to notice. And only because they stopped making more Bud Light. The food. Holy crap. Me and my sister would occasionally share meals because there was so much of it. And there'd still be loads left behind. The flags man. The flags. I used to joke with my mom that if my career doesn't work out I'm just gonna open a flag shop in the US. My dad lives in America. And I visited him for the first time in 10 years last September. First thing he did was take me to the local police gun range, where I was told how to fire a fully automatic assault rifle, a semi-automatic rifle, and a variety of pistols. They didn't even know my name and they put a gun in my hands and told me to shoot at a target. Best freaking day ever. Visited Miami a few years ago with a friend. We started a brief conversation with the hotel porter and told him we were from London. He goes hey I know some British slang. Throughout our stay whenever he saw us we were greeted with hey, what's up wankers and good morning you miserable C. It was hilarious. Back in the 90s I was in San Francisco. In Australia I had never seen a beggar, but there were heaps of them in San Francisco. Anyway, I was walking around, and this beggar comes up to me shaking his can full of coins in my face. He never said a word, just shook his can in my face. So I said to him, no thanks mate, I've got enough coins of my own. Stayed at a hotel in New York and the TV had only one program, commercials for medicine, and the style of the TV spots was outrageous, as if they were selling magic pills. Deep fried butter, really, I owe. Here is the conversation I had with a cashier in a Dunkin Donuts in Ohio, her, are you deaf, you speak funny, me, hum. I have an accent, I'm French Canadian, her, what do you mean, me, well, English isn't my first language, her, so you're not deaf, because you speak really slowly, and in a weird way, me, it's a French accent, her, okay, I understand, okay, it's a Canadian accent, weird, I mean, they weren't wrong, it is a Canadian accent. First city I came to in US was to LA, and went to Malibu Beach with a friend. My first reaction was I was told there would be fat people. Everyone were fit as freak. I was ashamed to take off my shirt. Being 20 not being able to buy a beer. WTF. 
All the cars were huge. When I came back to my hometown the cars seemed like toys in comparison. I went to Walmart once. We are so sorry. I was in Ella 2002, went into a petrol station in Inglewood on my way to West Hollywood. There was an old Korean guy behind the counter and one middle aged white women shopping. Two minutes after I walked in a low rider with five black guys rolled into the station. Now I'm black but I'm from London but these guys looked gangster as heck and were all black. Four of them walked into the shop while one was pumping petrol. The moment they walked in they started swearing at the old Korean guy, cussing him out. This went on for half a minute. Me and the old white lady looked at each and both thought this place was going to get robbed. The old Korean guy was standing behind the counter and had this calm look on his face the whole time and as soon they were done swearing he just came out said you black soul eating mother suckers need shut your big lips cause I don't understand one. Word of what you just said. Everything went quiet and I started to crouch down thinking this where I'm going to die. Just as I started to hide all the black guys burst out laughing and were falling all over each other and the old Korean man was laughing as well. Turns out this how they greet each other every time they come into the shop. Me the old white lady had the exact same look of relief on our faces. It was like seen out of Russia. Have a few. I lived in the Midwest as a kid but I am Australian. I had a woman who genuinely thought we took a bridge to get to America from Australia. I had a teacher who would not let me into the classroom in the morning unless I said a dingo stole my baby I was in grade 2 and had no clue what it meant. This same teacher would make me recite the Pledge of Allegiance. My sister showed up on the first day of school to find the discipline corner was Australia, with a badly drawn map that didn't include Tasmania, because that was where the convicts go. And lastly the men are people, children and adults, asking me if we rode kangaroos. I nearly got run over in Daytona Beach. Why the frick is anyone allowed to drive on a public beach? Walking into a supermarket and seeing the endless cereal lanes and the amount you can choose from, blew my mind. Also when I was working in a camp over a summer, I was devastated to see that the people who ran the place would actually choose to use throwaway dishes, cups and cutleries instead of normal ones. I don't know if that's typical, but it sure hurt my eco-protecting side to see all the waste just one day would generate. Had a good time though. Why is it acceptable for a lot of Americans to kick their kids out of home as soon as they turn 18? I'm 30 now so it's been a while, but at least when I was a kid it was just a holdover from a time when it was more doable. I come from a blue collar family that never had a college graduate before my generation so nobody ever had debt to worry about. We lived in the rural midwest where decent to high paying jobs in manufacturing and construction were easy to come by. Housing in general was cheap. It was all in all just much easier to do when my parents were that age and even easier for my grandparents, all of whom also got married at that age. The difference with me is that my little farming town absolutely frickin boomed in population when I was growing up, and it coincided perfectly with the manufacturing jobs getting shipped out of town and the financial crash happening right as I graduated high school. I grew up expecting to leave when I was 18 but luckily my mom saw the writing on the wall and knew it wouldn't be possible by the time I was at age, so she let me stay as long as I was working. A lot of people in my area specifically, formerly rural, now suburban midwest, weren't so lucky, and had way less flexible parents who basically told them to suck it up because it was easy for them so logically it'll be easy for you too. So I can't speak for America as a whole, but while it's really not nearly as common as it used to be, when it happens in mostly white areas that used to be pretty small, it's because it used to be easy 30 years ago and some people simply aren't willing to recognize how different the world is and just shove their kids off to be an adult before they have any reasonable chance of being self-sufficient. My ex-boyfriend's take on this was that he would have paid for them to live at his house up to 16, get a job at 16 and pay rent, then kick them out as soon as they graduate. He said because at 18 they are an adult and all adults should take care of themselves. Now he had crippling back pain and wouldn't get out of bed for days, expecting others to wait on him. It's a back asswards thing that people do. My parents had the healthy version of this. They said after I graduated that they'd be giving me no further money to support me, but that I always had a bed and meals for free at home when I needed it. At times I did need it, and overall it was a healthy transition into self-sufficiency. My grandmother kicked me out when I was 19, 
I was working at Taco Bell for 7.25 an hour. Gave me 3 months to save up and move out. Kinda impossible making that little. Plus I had to pay for school out of pocket. Slept outside for 2 days. Called crying asking to come back. She said nap. It's time you learn how to be a man. And I never went back. Maybe cause I didn't talk to her a lot or interact socially. But I still think it was fricked up. Roadmap for failure in the future. I'm interested in your story. How you came up out of that. It also depends on what the kid is doing. My cousin's son dropped out of college at 19 to come home and play WoW in the basement 24 stroke 7. Refused to get a job. Go back to school. Volunteer. After a few months we did an intervention. Said he was free to play video games all day and night. Just not at my cousin's house. Could go on social assistance. Get an app with friends. Whatever. Just not stay where he was. Gave him a 3 month deadline. By which time he had started going to the gym and had found a college diploma course he liked and headed back to school. He graduated and is doing great now. Has his own apt in another city and a nice girlfriend. Hope he kicked wow to the curb. It seems like it kinda fricked him up for a bit. This only happens in families that already have other underlying issues. If you and your parents get along there is a pretty high likelihood you are sticking around for a while. If you don't want to get a job dropped out of high school, and don't help out around the house then maybe yeah they will look at giving you a kick in the pants. A recent study found that 52% of people age 18-29 still live with their parents. This is the highest since the Great Depression. High cost of rent and student loans are a main contributing factor. I have to think that the parents that do this truly never wanted kids to begin with. Or didn't realize it until it was too late and this is their easy out of having the burden of responsibility. Just my opinion. I have nothing to base this off of. They're buttholes. In our circumstance, we said to our 18 year old son. You can't have your girlfriend over to our house while we're at work and have loud sex with her while your little sister is home. Give your sister some money and send her to the park for an hour. Take her to her grandparents house. Something. This is not okay. Junior. We told you not to do this. Your girlfriend's moaning and wailing is embarrassing and upsetting. Stop it. This is our house. These are our rules. No loud sex while your sister's home. Go to your girlfriend's house. Get a hotel room. Junior. If you do this one more time, we're going to kick you out. We're serious. This is not your house. You pay no rent. We decide what goes on in our house. And this loud moaning and sex talk cannot go on while your little sister's home. If you disrespect us and your sister again, you're out. Do you understand? He left us no choice. Well, she did. Really. All she had to do was be quiet. For Christ's sake. I lived at home until 27. Once I had a full time job my parents only asked that I help around the house and call them if I'm gonna be out late. Staying at home helped me save the money to purchase a house with my now wife. Pretty much the same for me. Lived with my parents for several years after college. Bought my house at 28. They did kind of push my older sister out a couple years after I left but it was a situation where she could easily afford her own place and kind of needed to just learn to be an independent adult. My dad tried to do this to me. I had been working 30 hours a week during the school year, 50 during the summer milking cows since I was 15. Buying food for the family, so I would have something to eat when I got home. I told him no, and I am pretty sure that my mom chewed his butt, as he stopped saying anything to me after that. After 3 semesters of community college I transferred to a state school 150 miles away. I was super happy when my grandparents basically made up the excuse that we are moving and don't want the new house to be empty, so you should move in for the summers. Only spend one night in the house by myself. Thanks grandma. Now I do foster care and I tell her all our kids that they are welcome to stay until they are 30. Not sure who will take us up on the offer, as it's only been a few years, but the offer is very real. A bit of context you're missing is that in America, it is was expected that you move out when you're 18. This is a bit of an artifact from a couple decades ago, but the idea was, nobody wanted to stay at home after 18. You turned 18. You were done with school, you could get a job and your own place, have some freedom, live your life, 
depth compare and contrast to some cultures where you're expected to live with your parents until you get married. That idea is stifling to many Americans. Now, all that is different than being kicked out at 18. But that's the context. Now take a family that has issues. Parents who are struggling or abusive in some way. They'll go your 18. This is America. Get out. On top of your last paragraph, there are also some families who feel like this culture of independence is a really good thing, and so it is their duty to enforce it. Maybe that's exactly what you're saying, but I think there's a difference between abusive parents using this culture as an excuse, and those who are honestly trying to be good parents. Crappy parents throw their kids out at 18, because that's the earliest they can legally do it. This isn't really seen as acceptable. There is a cultural expectation for adult children to move out and be fully independent as soon as they can, though. But that's not the day they turn 18. Yo 100 years ago you could throw your 9 year old out to end the street if you were tired of him. We're making progress. Just to balance the scales a bit. I know people here in utopian Denmark who got kicked out when they were 18. Social safety net being better than most places, it is less harsh, but still. And even here in America, this isn't really a popular thing to do, and in many cases is frowned upon. Don't get me wrong, it happens, but I would say it's much less of an American thing to do and more of an butthole parent thing to do instead. My kid is a preteen. He can stay with us as long as he wants provided he is doing something productive with his life and working towards self-sufficiency. I only care about that really because it is good to have professional and personal goals and I want him to be able to take care of himself after I die. I would never make him move out because he is a certain age. At some point, ask them to pay rent, then secretly put that rent into a bank account and when they are ready to leave, hand them the cash. My dad started threatening to kick me out as soon as I hit puberty. His limit was my refusal to adopt his racism and involving myself romantically with people he only referred to in derogatory terms. I had a week to pack my crap and find a place because he had already bought a new house. I was immediately disowned and battled homelessness and unemployment for the next two years. It's been three years since we've spoken. He still has sentimental items of mine. And he never told me his new address though it wasn't hard to find. I feel this only happens in families where the relationship is already damaged and the parent, s, are usually raging narcissists. Although I'm going off of anecdotal evidence. The parent, s, are usually raging narcissists. I think this is a very good and accurate point. Maybe with white Americans but it's not the case with Asian, Hispanic, and Arab Americans who let their kids stay at home until they're ready to move out. The kids usually end up looking after their parents when they get old too instead of dumping them in a retirement home. Those cultures are just more family orientated compared to western cultures which are more about being independent. Here in Pakistan and most Asian countries it is sort of a tradition that you live with your parents till marriage until and unless you are studying in a university and live in the uni housing or you have graduated from uni and have a nice paying job even then parenta don't kick out their children. Children usually move out when they think it is right for them. Also for us it is absurd that parents don't support you. Actually I don't know any single person that had to pay for their education out of pocket. Parents here 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
When money and jobs were plenty, it was easy for kids just turned 18 to leave and start their own families. This was back when minimum wage was actually the minimum wage you could live off of. It's hard to say if it was just easier for them to leave, or if it was trendy socialized to be on your own. I believe that was around or before the baby boomers. So it was there just long enough to become the social norm or the expected. I read about other countries where you can stay with your parents until you're 30 plus or married. Sometimes even then the newly married couple just starts their own family inside the previous family's home. That's so wild. I stayed with my parents until I was 20 and even then I was filled with shame for not being able to provide for myself like I was expected to. Both of my kids are 25, and both of them have, over the last 7 years, moved out and come back twice. I've always told them that no matter what, my home is a soft landing space for them if they need it, and thankfully they've come back here rather than try to tough it out unnecessarily. But here's the thing. They both have tried to rush through getting their crap back together to move back out as soon as they can. And it's not me that's rushing them out the door. It's them. They have been fed this social construct that they should feel ashamed for living at home. That they should be off trying to make something of themselves. And if they're still living with their mom, they've got a tick in the failure box. My daughter and granddaughter live with me now. Again. And I've done my best not to put pressure on her to stay. But gradually, over the past 6 months she's starting to let go of that balls and beginning to make decisions based on what she needs. And not what society, or other family members think. I love my kids, and I love my alone time. But I'm going to make good and goddamn sure that they don't have to struggle unnecessarily. I don't believe it builds character. I think it's a low level trauma that I can help them to avoid. There's nothing wrong with a struggle that actually gets you somewhere, but spinning your wheels, jumping from fire to pan to fire to pan, that takes away time and energy from crap that will actually improve their lives. I have no idea this has got to be a crazy thing. I have a friend from HK and he is confused by this as well. At 18 while you are an adult you're not ready to play on an adult level yet. Why not stay at home save your money sure help with food and bills but save your money go to school. Learn a trade start a business or buy some restate to use as a business property. As a parent why would you set your child up for failure by telling them they have to get out at 18. Let them stay and make sure they that when they make that step and move out they have a strong foundation and a safety net that is in place. Some parents believe that letting your kids stay past 18 is coddling them and setting them up for failure in that way. They made it on their own at 18, so the kid should too. I don't agree, but that's the main mindset I've encountered. Come to Sweden, we are probably the most individualistic country on earth. We have kids who move out of their home as low as 15 without people bulging an eye. It's a bit harder now, because we are in a housing crisis, but it's still expected for kids to move out ASAP. My oldest kid turns 18 next month and I would never dream of making him move out. He is legit an awesome person, and I will be so sad when he decides to move, whenever that might be. I feel you. My oldest just moved out about 3 weeks ago and I'll tell you. It was such a mixed bag of emotions. Super proud and super sad at the same time. The move was his decision. Cause he has a good job and wanted his own space. Which I totally get. But I never ever would have made him move out. That's some straight up crazy crap bag parenting emo. As an American that was able to live with my grandparents till 23 then was allowed to move back in with my husband when I was pregnant. He just got out of the military. Till we could find a place I find it insane. Knowing I have them to lean on might make me less of an adult in some people's eyes but it is a great feeling to have. It doesn't make you less of an adult. Some families have a lot of money and would just send a bunch. That's normal. Some families people love each other and want to help. That should be normal too. People aren't birds you kick out of a nest and they either fly or die splashed on the concrete pavement. I think it's less a cultural thing and more the idea that reddit is predominantly used by young americans and that people don't post about their parents being kind to them quite as often as the alternative. My mother kicked me out several times, starting when I was around 7. Eventually, I developed the habit of keeping an emergency suitcase packed. At 16, I had been saving up money from a job for a while and could tell that another blow up was coming. So I grabbed my emergency suitcase, 
Got a plane ticket from Salt Lake City to Seattle and never went back. It was incredibly terrifying and living homeless. At that age. Came with a lot of traumatic bulls but I think my mother just couldn't handle not getting her way. Any disagreement was perceived as disrespect and I wasn't ever going to be okay with that. So I went my own way. I'd never wish that situation on anyone and it should be illegal to put your kids through that. In the US you are viewed as a failure if you still live with your parents as an adult. Here they probably still live in their mom's basement as a huge insult. Some of them think that their kid will never succeed if there is no incentive to make it on your own. And according to them hardship builds character. I'm not defending it and there are plenty of other terrible reasons why a parent would kick out their child. But this is probably why it's not looked down upon. Agreed. My oldest son. 24. Had to move back in with us recently when he and his GF broke up. Every week he was groaning on about he didn't want to be a failure who had to live with mommy and daddy. We didn't mind him being there, and told him so. But he didn't like having rules either, no drinking or women. So he found the fastest way out he could lol. It's baggage from the great depression and our parents and grandparents resulting work ethic. Times were brutal back then and it was earn your keep or gtfo. I turned 18 in the 90s and mom was always very clear that 18 mean pay rent to her or to a landlord. To some extent it was more realistic in the past. There was a time when a kid with no experience could get a good job labouring in a factory, or in construction, and work their way into a career that could buy a house, feed kids, and pay for college. That's not the reality anymore. Because there was a time in America where you could work 40 hours a week and own a home, have a family, and a car and provide for yourself. Parents tend to be under the impression that America is still that way when it's certainly not been for some time now. Historically it was because most of us didn't need to live at home. We were either away at college or had jobs that allowed us to support ourselves. Either way, it was usually our choice, not so much our parents kicking us out. However, things aren't as cheap for young adults anymore so more are staying at home longer. If you hang out around abusive parents subreddits it's going to seem like a common thing that happens a lot and it happens more than it should but in the grand scheme of things it's a small percentage. Most of the PPL I know that were kicked out at 18 21 years old came from religious households. Although, there are situations where I don't blame the parents, like if their kid is addicted to dope and committing crimes despite numerous interventions. Well. I'm currently being threatened with getting kicked out. My father's child support is ending soon. So my mother says she can't afford our house without the payments, despite the fact her husband and her earn 80k. Therefore, they're getting a smaller house without room for me. So financial reasons could be a reason it's acceptable in the US, especially for single mothers. However considering they're keeping my older brother who dropped out of college, it's likely personal reasons in my case. I'm Australian and was kicked out of home age 15 as was my brother. Pretty common in lower socioeconomic circles I grew up in so it seemed normal at the time. My stepdad kicked me out of my mom's house less than a month after I turned 18 and gave me 6 hours to get out. I had to work that night and couldn't find anyone to cover me so I could pack my stuff. I hauled out as much as I could in the one trip I had time for, which wasn't much. I came back after work to get the rest of my stuff and my mom had moved my brother into my bedroom. She refused to give me any more of my stuff. She gave me a yellow folder full of information on therapists, and a dirty blanket. That's it. I literally had nowhere to go, and couch surfed for a while before finding someone to take me on as a roommate. I think American parents are just more heartless. Confirmation bias. Reddit is very America centric. I think it's less an issue of American culture and more of crappy parents who think they're only parents for 18 years and then rid of all responsibility. I'd say greed in my case. My parents constantly talked about kicking me out of the house by 18 and then how I'd be responsible for taking care of them in their old age. As soon as I turned 18 my dad started charging me $700 a month to stay with him along with doing every household chore for him. American parents seem entitled and act like their children owe them eternal gratitude, respect and money then act confused and hurt when they get cut out of their children's lives. It is parents who don't really parent, 
trying to go through the motions when it comes to raising children. In America, at 18, high school is over, and past that it is up to the family, child and parent, to move the child into secondary education or vocation, but it isn't mandatory. In a stable well-structured household the transition to college, or vocational training or an employment path, is done with the parents, guiding and helping the child. In a house where parenting has failed, the parents try to reach the same outcome by kicking the kid out because they believe it's the kid's fault they haven't moved into the adulthood of forward education or employment. In other words, they think this is what parents are supposed to do, is kick the kid out, because they are lazy or losers, like somehow they play no role in the maturation of their own child. In Italy you literally stay with your parents until you can afford to move out and settle down with a partner. It's perfectly normal for someone in their late 20s and even 30s to live with their parents, and it works because there is a mutual respect there. I see so often in the UK as well as the States, kids growing up to hate their parents and parents hating their kids. Then the kid wants to move out at 18 or 21 and moans because they can't afford to buy some apartment. Why on earth should you be able to buy an apartment at that age? It's just crazy to me. I was dying to get out of my parents house, but I was already paying for a full college load out of my earnings and there was just not enough left. Others may feel the same way, but have the resources to act. Our kids stayed until they were done with school and had jobs. Usually, when parents force their kids out, there is substance abuse, criminal behavior, psychological impairment, or a combination in the family. It's much more common on Reddit than in real life. Comma it's much more common on Reddit than in real life. 100%. Because when this generation's parents were 18 the economy was going well enough that you easily could just move out at 18. College, plus dorm and all that, could be paid with a part time job and getting a degree almost guaranteed a well paying job. Once women entered the workforce, the price of labor effectively halved, not blaming women here. But now low skilled workers and virtually worthless to employers and a college degree has become another unhelpful hurdle. To start your kid off well these days requires at least 20 years, often longer. Combine that bad precedent with the fact that children are interacting less and less with their parents every year, and it gets worse. Any more parents don't tend to know how to form a relationship with their kids. Mostly because they never see them. Everyone is working all the time. So why does that matter? At about 16-18 the relationship between a child and parent must change dramatically. The kid has to become an adult and take their life into their own hands. Which means the parents have to let go of control. Which is really hard to do when your relationship hasn't built up to be much more than one based on parental control and, hopefully, guidance. If there's no genuine human connection, the child's growth equates to the loss of your child. It may seem strange, but many people would rather lose their child than think they've lost their child. Seems something like that to me. What are some weird things Americans do that are considered weird or taboo in your country? Call someone out for rudeness in public. In the UK we just glare and tut until we develop a stomach ulcer from the built up stress. Hanging on in quiet desperation is the English way. I'm quite late, but I'm a European who just experienced Mardi Gras. A float went by that had the navy on it and everyone started chanting USA. I joined in for the craic and it was great fun. My American friend apologized to me after, and it was only then that I realized he probably saw it as me having to deny my nationality in a crowd, whereas I just saw it as a bit of fun drunken chanting. I have lived in both Finland and the USA. Once I woke up in the middle of the day after a house party, I got up and found peanut butter in a cabinet and jam in the fridge. As I started making a class PB and J the other people in the house surrounded me and gave me a face of confusion. Someone asked me wait, you are really going to eat that? I guess people in Finland do not eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. They all thought the idea was gross. I say they're missing out. The amount of ad breaks you lot have during TV shows is ridiculous. I remember when I was on holiday in the US and was watching an episode of The Simpsons. It had the normal ad break in the middle then came back on. The show ended and went to another super long ad break for it to come back on to just show the credits. Calling colored people African American. Nobody here says African Canadian. 
I met some Americans a few years ago in France and was surprised by their warm and easy given invitations to come by next time I would visit the US. Very guest friendly. Never used any of those invitations though. I was not sure they meant it or if the invitations were merely a friendly gesture. In Holland invitations are not that given that easy. At first I thought it was very weird that when men and women said hello, they shook hands or waved at each other. Where I'm from we say hello cheek to cheek. It took me a while to get used to. I tried this in high school. Did not go over too well. Especially with other guys. Endless, costly political campaigning. In Canada campaigns are typically 1-2 months, with strict spending limits. In New Zealand people barely ever seem to ask questions ask the lecturers questions. In my engineering class our lecturer asked who wanted to be engineers and nobody raised their hand. Asking how are you after meeting someone. In Germany it's never spoken, because I guess we don't care how you are. Oh we don't actually care either, it's just a thing to say. The sheer number of different churches and Christian denominations. Here in Ireland we have two churches, Catholic and Protestant. A lot of those are Americanized names for Protestant churches in Europe. If you take the Anglican church for example, after the revolution, it wasn't great to have the same name as the church led by the guy you just fought a war against for over a decade, so they changed it to Episcopal. I kissed my so in her home country of the Philippines in front of the elders big no no, it was just a peck too. Haha <laughs> yeah, PDAs kinda frowned upon my older traditional Filipinos. I hugged my boyfriend outside of my house once when I was 17 and my mom told me now all the neighbors know your W. Please stop using different narrators for David Attenborough documentaries. This is just wrong. Agreed. Lobbying. It's strictly forbidden in my country for political parties to receive funding from any corporation. Every political party is funded by the state itself based on the amount of votes it received in the latest election. Actually, here, lobbying is like a curse word that parties throw at each other from time to time as like the word treason. I can't really wrap my head around how political campaigns receive huge amounts of donations from corporations and it is justified in the US. Apparently sweet tea is only in the states, and mainly in the southern states. I'm not sure how to describe it but sweet tea in the south definitely tastes different than iced tea or other teas I've had. It's just a particular kind I think but the way it's made and served makes it taste different. I had some at my friend's house down south and it was the best thing ever. The canned sweet tea you can buy doesn't taste remotely close. Openly tell you jokes. German. Lawyers advertising. When I was in Louisiana I remember an ad that was something like that. Have you been bite by an alligator? We can help you get in reparation. I thought it was hilarious. I'm in law school and here in Brazil lawyers are very serious and formal. Not this mediatic thing. American living in Australia here. In Australia when you don't understand what someone says, it is rude to say what. You should say pardon. Saying what is too direct or confrontational or something. Most of the time people won't say anything. But my girlfriend said one said what to her 19 year old boss. And her boss said who are you to say what to me. I try really hard to remember to say pardon but sometimes I get too focused on trying to understand the content of what people are saying. And it is easy to let habit override and let a what slip out. For any Australians reading this. Please know that in the US saying what neither polite or impolite, it is about as common as saying hello, and saying pardon all the time in the US would be a little bit weird. Tip the bartender at every order. Whilst I understand why and how it works in the UK we tip when we receive good service giving it a sense that they earned it, whereas in the USA it's custom to tip on every drink as the wages are lower and the staff rely on tips to bump up the wage earned. Also in a crowded bar, you are more likely to get quick service the next time if you tipped last time. Advertisements for medicine. I watched very little TV in my time in the US, but every other advertisement seemed to be for some kind of medicine. Seriously, if I'm sick, I'll go see a doctor who'll give me what I need. I think Americans just think I have pain here, must get brand name drug to solve the pain. And the massive list of side effects they have to tell you during the advert too. Then there's the bad substance adverts too. Don't get them in the UK. 
the lack of annual leave, vacation time, from work. My uncle recently moved to the UK from the states and nearly passed out when he realized I get around 35 days holiday a year. In the UK, by law, everyone who works full time, 5 days a week, is entitled to a minimum of 28 days paid leave a year, including bank holidays. I'm from Denmark and was recently in the US. I was 99% sure I was gonna die a horrible horrible death when someone sat next to me on the bus even though there was lots of seats open. The world needs to know, we don't like people in Denmark. Saving up for, and paying your children's college tuition. Here in New Zealand, there's a thing called Study Link, which is basically a government run interest free student loan that you automatically start paying back out of your paycheck when you graduate and earn over a certain threshold. Not eating your national animal. Kangaroos are bloody delicious. I wouldn't say it's weird at all, but patriotism is very different. In a lot of European countries, if you fly your country's flag at any time other than during the World Cup, it has a stigma of being associated with fascists and racists. Whereas in the US, I've driven down many streets and see the US flag hanging from purpose-built flagpoles built into a house. I guess an equivalent in the US is the Confederate flag maybe? Tipping in general is taboo in Japan. They see it as an insult. Making zip codes a mandatory field on sites that sell internationally. Question to non-Americans that find it weird that Americans are nice and talk to strangers regularly. About a month ago my battery died in my car when I was at a local hardware store. It took me asking two people to find someone who would jump my car off. The man then insisted he follow me to the nearest auto parts store, about 3 miles away, to make sure I don't break down on the way. Would this be considered weird in your country? An interesting observation for me is that American politeness is considered more friendly and outgoing while European politeness is based on respecting other space and privacy. Yet Americans greet at a distance through waves or handshakes and Europeans greet cheek to cheek. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches are rare outside the US. Having fake, canned, over the top laughter in your TV shows, I think you know when something's funny without having to be prompted to laugh. A lot of Americans hate that too. Not getting paid maternity paternity leave. I know some employers pay leave, but where I come from all employers have to. It's simply the law. I can't imagine how expensive it can be for you to have kids. I guess you also have to pay for the medical cost if you don't have insurance. As an outside observer, the US seems to hold personal responsibility as a paramount virtue. While in the countries I've lived social responsibility is the priority. It's a mindset that has an impact on everything from legislation all the way down to common courtesy. California is not representative of the rest of the US. The California that the media shows isn't even representative of California. I'm an American and I live in Japan and one habit I had to break quickly was my habit of pointing with my chopsticks, sorry. Being a patriot, it is easily mixed up with the wrong, and dangerous, kind of nationalism in the country I live in, the Netherlands. The often staunch patriotism is a tad foreign to someone living in Germany. Talking about work asking what a person does for a living in great detail at a social function party. I think this is in part due to America being such a workaholic country. Work tends to be much more ingrained on the brain. When I'm out or at a party to unwind, the last thing I want to talk about is anything related to work. It's such a cool joy. Ask me about what movies I've seen or where I traveled to, not what my daily work routine entails. When I was living in America for a short while, It'd be unbearable going to parties where the bulk of the people I talked to would always ask right off the bat what I do for work and would want to know more about it. How has there not been legislation in America for people to be entitled to a large amount of holiday time? You lot are overworked. When my dad is watching a typical American TV show, he makes gagging faces when people are acting so extremely nice. He doesn't mind people being nice of course, but in my country we are suspicious when people are that nice. This is hilarious because people usually act rude in those shows. Sporting competitions just stop to allow ads to be played on the TV coverage. Freakishly weird, 
Everywhere else the sports just get played and the ads have to work around the sport. I realized this through my girlfriend the other day, but overhearing a convo is bad where she's from. She's from Southeastern Asia, and they just flat out ignore things they overhear from what I gather. To then start talking about it, or use it as a chance to talk to someone is even worse. But apparently it's something Americans do so offhandedly, and totally baffles her. Guys asking out girls in random places like shops, on the street, that's just creepy here. It's not particularly classy here either, unless you're exceedingly smooth. Not likely. You strike up a conversation and then get her phone number Facebook. You talk a bit via that, ask out via that, and it gives her the space to not be put on the spot and can say no if she wants. In China, if you're handing something to someone who are your elder, people a generation or two above you, teacher, boss, etc., you do it with two hands. It's disrespectful to just hand it off with one hand, although at home, it could be more casual. When I'm interacting with Asians in the US, I still make sure to do that. Talk to random strangers. Not taboo, per se, but we Brits would never consider driving two hours for lunch. There would have to be family or nookie involved to make that journey in the first place, or if in Norfolk, both at the same time. And we'd still be looking for a hotel for the night, drive back the same day, don't be daft. This one occurred to me whilst working in Boston for 18 months. A friend lives in Hartford, CT and we decided to meet up for lunch halfway. I'd obviously been there long enough to think it no big thing. D. Americans think a hundred years is old. Europeans think a hundred miles is far. Laws changing drastically between states. People who have visited the US. What is your WTF America story? I'm Canadian and I went down to the US to do a little shopping. I accidentally pulled out some Canadian bills and the cashier asked why I kept Monopoly money in my wallet. A lot of people might say it was just sarcasm. I don't think it was. The cashier looked around 16 years old. She had probably never seen Canadian money before. When I started awkwardly chuckling, she had a puzzled look on her face. But who knows, maybe she was just really invested in a joke. As a Michigander it is always common to pay with accidental Canadian and to receive the accidental Canadian currency. It pisses me off when I didn't pay attention. Those gaps in your toilet stall doors. What are they even for? To clarify, I meant the gaps in the sides of the door, not the bottom. Peaking. I visited from Canada a couple years ago. Everyone was very nice and had the exact same mildly interested reaction to a credit card with a chip. We've finally started transitioning to these in the last year or year and a half. We're a bit behind. After moving from Africa, as a teen, I am repeatedly asked why I moved to Africa in the first place, to which I reply that I've always lived there. I am also asked, so why are you white to which I reply, oh my god, Karen. You can't just ask people why they're white however, when they reply with blank stares I realize they aren't referencing mean girls. Some other questions. Comma so Africa is one country and all the borderlines are, like, states, comma are there, you know, buildings, comma you guys have memes over there, right, comma are you Australian? Australian here. I went to Houston last year and spoke to a girl my age in the airport. We got chatting about uni college. It was around July, and she asked me if I was on my summer vacation. I casually explained I was on my winter break. She was genuinely confused and did not understand how it was summer in the US but winter in Australia. I tried to explain but eventually gave up. An American once complimented me on my excellent English when I told her I was from Australia. Aussie here. When I started chatting to a cashier she squealed and asked where I was from. I told her Australia and she instantly dumped down how she spoke. Do. Y'all. Speak. English. Down. There? I replied sporadically. She laughed and informed me that wasn't a word. Singaporean here. I feel your pain. You speak really good English for an Asian. When I went to the US. The first time and ordered a meal from Burger King. Ordering a large fry, coke, and a whopper. I was blown away by the size of it all. Each item was larger than the same item back home. I was already like WTF. 
but then the cashier said I could have a second whopper for one dollar. Again, I was like WTF, sign me up. Another time, while I was in Daytona, I went to a restaurant and the woman kept refilling my drink, again and again. Being a bit shy, I did not tell her to stop, and expected a bill with $15 for sodas, but then I found out the refills were free. WTF. Free refills. I'd only seen that at places like Subway, but so many restaurants in the US had free refills. I love the US. For restaurants and food in general, the portions are massive and very reasonably priced. Went to Walmart. The fabled creatures there are just as the internet portrays them as, nonetheless still mind-blowing. My first trip into a Walmart I saw a man in a brass button blazer with perfectly brill creamed hair, sparkling white teeth, orange skin and white slacks that looked like he had stepped right out of an advert from the 1950s. He was with a very large woman wearing a I love my gay daughter t-shirt. I was so happy. How spread out everything is. Like, it's pretty much impossible for me to survive without a car. While everywhere I needed to go on a regular basis back in London was in a 10 minute biking distance. Also, the number of pickup trucks people own without needing. It has come to my attention that the city I live in, Jacksonville, Florida, is the widest city in the 48 contiguous states of the US, with a population of just under 1 million. That explains a lot. Especially out here in the west, the metro area I live in is like 8% the size of London population wise, but it'll take you 45 minutes by car to drive from one side of town to another. If you live anywhere in America outside of Washington DC, New York, Boston, downtown Chicago or a few other places, it's vital to own a car. Every single one of you bastards asked me where in England I was from. I'm from Australia. Pretty much as far away from England as you can get without leaving the planet. Asked a girl in a hooker, lunge if she knew where New Zealand, my home country was. She replied asking is that the country above us? Well, it is a globe. If you get the angle right, you'll hit New Zealand eventually. A universal WTF for both foreign and US citizens. The Golden Corral. Everything was submerged in liquid butter. The patrons were larger than some cars. One time at Golden Corral many years back I saw an overweight guy in suspenders whose chest, primarily due to the suspenders, was a freaking square. He wasn't round, instead he was wide but flat. He was only about 5 feet 5 inches so that likely played a role into his geometric shape as well. Was the most mind blowing thing I'd ever seen from a golden corral. I'd never been out of Australia before. In Australia only farmers and cops have guns. And some criminals I guess. So I had never seen a gun that wasn't in a cop's holster in my entire 30 year existence. We go to the US for our honeymoon and have the honor and privilege of visiting a Walmart. The guns are just on the shelf. You can touch them. A fellow Aussie friend who was with us at the time asked the cashier if she could hold one. He looked at her as if she had asked if it was okay to breathe the store's air. Can I hold one? This big one she asked, incredulous. Sure, if you want to, the guy said, confused and bored at the same time. She picked up this big butt gun. Sorry, not a gun guy. Don't know what it was. It was about the size of a shotgun but was bulkier. And was getting us to take photos of her with it. If I had a gun like that at home and walked outside my house with it. Someone would drive past and see me in about 10 seconds. They would call the cops. Which would take about 30 seconds. The police station is just up the road so I estimate a cop car would arrive in about 3 minutes. And it would take about 10 seconds for a cop to ask me politely to jump in his car and come for a nice chat down at the police station. But it would be fun for 4 minutes. Honeymoon was not literally at Walmart. Honeymoon was 2 week Kentucky tour followed by 1 week in NYC. Fun times. About the size of a shotgun but was bulkier. That sounds like a shotgun. I was in Vegas with 3 Danish friends. And we were very hungover. 3 of us not the driver. We decided to go for a drive in the convertible. After 15 minutes a police officer on a bike drives up next to us and just stares into the car. This lasted like 5-10 seconds. So the driver turns his head and asks anything wrong officer? The officer replied, in a super angry tone keep your motherfucking eyes on the motherfucking road. 
he continued to follow us for about a mile, just staring at us. Super freaking creepy. Also had bad police experiences in Florida, New York, and San Diego. Some people join because they honestly want to help people and then a distressing segment joins because they are power hungry psychopaths. I'm from Canada and the first thing I saw upon my arrival to Port Angeles, Washington, which happened to be the first time I stepped foot in the states, was a large spherical lady sitting in the middle of the sidewalk blocking my path to the bus terminal, just staring at me. Another time, I was in San Diego one summer and a woman, genuinely curious, asked me if it was summer in Vancouver too. On a bus going into New York City from New Jersey, there was a middle-aged white man on the bus. As he goes to get off the bus, I notice the tip of a used condom hanging out of the back pocket of his khaki pants. Instead of saying thank you as he is leaving the bus, he tells the young black female bus driver, not too bad for being black. Dude was not masturbating on the bus, nor did he frick the bus driver. He was sitting a few seats away from me. That would be an even more WTF moment, which I would have included in my original post. That's just Uncle Bob. He's harmless. Do you know any Vikings? Asked by a nice young blonde with a straight and serious face in McDonald's. I'm from Denmark. Also, good god Texas has a lot of fat people. I went to Applebee's. Mistake number one I guess. I was then served by a nice young lady called Brittany who asked me with a serious face if we have trees in Scotland. Sorry about that. Everyone knows Brittany is an idiot. Brit here. We went to Ruby Tuesdays in the Florida mall and saw a woman take a bowl from the salad bar, fill it with ranch dressing and sit back at her table eating it like it was soup. Luckily that wasn't the only treat Florida had for us on that trip. I think Florida is just like one giant Walmart. I was in an Uber going to the airport and the driver asked where I was flying to. I said Hong Kong. He asked if I spoke Japanese. I told him that we speak Chinese in Hong Kong. He says what's the difference H is genuinely didn't know that Japanese and Chinese were different languages. <laughs> Went into a shop. They had spray on cheese. I don't think the majority of Americans here know how ridiculous that sounds to the rest of us. Spray. On. Cheese. I'm from the UK. Lived in the US for about 5 years now. Few things that annoy me. You want to get a loan for a new car? There's a fee for that. On top of the interest. You want to take money out of the ATM. There's a fee for that. You want to exchange some currency? There's a fee for that. On top of the exchange spread. A product has money off. You'll have to send something to receive it. They hope you can't be bothered. Pretty much any service. Someone will try to make a few extra dollars off you. Credit unions are your friend. Was in Spokane at Silverwood. Amusement park. And asked where the washroom was. I was promptly told there were no washrooms in the park. This happened a good handful of times and it never even occurred to me that I had to say restroom to receive any real help. Weird, although we don't typically say washroom I can't imagine someone not knowing that it is synonymous with bathroom. Sounds like you ran into a handful of real boneheads. I visited America recently, and there are so many more people than I'm used to. I come from New Zealand, and our biggest city only has about 1.3 to 1.5 million people in it, and the total population is around 4.471 million people. And even Auckland is too big for me, I'm a Wellington man for sure. I'm Canadian and have visited the United States multiple time and have had an overall enjoyable experience on each one. I wouldn't blame this on America but I saw a fat bald middle aged man standing on the side of a Pennsylvania highway with bunny ears. I'm sure this happens in Canada too but this is the first time I've seen something like this. I saw a fat bald middle aged man standing on the side of a Pennsylvania highway with bunny ears. Easter bunny has had a rough few years. People just don't care about Jesus coming back anymore. Well. I hadn't even arrived yet in the US but in the plane as a foreigner you have to fill a paper to enter the country with various questions among which did you come to murder the president of the United States. WTF America? President is murdered. He selected no in that field of the form. There's no way we could have stopped him. I'm American, but live in France at the moment. 
French people love telling me about the time they went to the US and the crazy things that they saw. Two of my favorites are one. A friend was complaining about the food in the US and then said and we went to this restaurant and they only had one food. Only pizza and two. A French friend visited the US and people kept saying voulez-vous coucher avec moi. C'est soi de him. This is a rather shocking thing to say to a stranger. I visited the US. Never understood suburban young kids with huge trucks that clearly do not do any manual labor. I visited. But I also have lived here my whole life. I was walking down the strip in Vegas at 2.30 am and got talking to some lads who were making a stop on their drive cross country from college. This one guy was special. First thing he couldn't understand was that although it was 2.30 am in Vegas it was 10.30 am in the UK. Then he didn't believe we'd suffered a terrorist attack in London. 7 stroke 7. Lastly, no matter how I protested, he refused to believe our police didn't carry guns. Then he stopped for a second. Looked really thoughtful and said I, I guess you guys don't have black people in England. I went to Florida shortly after there had been a hurricane and a lot of people's homes and businesses got completely trashed. There were a surprising amount of local people we spoke to who were content with their livelihoods being destroyed because it was God's will. I lived in the US for a year previously, in Texas. Over this time I got a lot of comments on my accent. I'm English but the most WTF one went like this. Huh. Oh. I like your accent. Where are you from? Me. Thank you. I'm from England. Huh. Your English is very good. Me. Confused smiler. Thank you. Huh. So. What language do you speak in England? Me. Laugh. Thinking this is a joke. Huh. Deadpan confused look. Me. English. Then there was the time someone was convinced I was Australian. I'm a northerner. I have a Yorkshire accent. Even one new person shares in this horror it's worth taking the minutes to answer. On a greyhound I saw a mom mix mountain dew and breast milk in a bottle and feed it to her baby. Not a WTF America moment, but I met an absolute idiot in Orange County, Cali. She was fascinated when my friend told her that we are Irish. She started asking crazy questions about Ireland. Questions like do fairies really live there? And is it true you guys have no electricity or roads in Ireland? She fully believed us when we told her that we do have roads but we have to take them in at night. She also fully believed us when we told her that we only have 6 days in a week because we had to get rid of Tuesdays. I've been many times but the first time I went to downtown LA, it hit me how unglamorous parts of the US really are. Same with NYU step outside of the business district and things look like really old and rundown. Waiting in the airport to fly home, went to McDonald's cause I was a bit hungry. Ordered a regular cheeseburger meal. The fries and drink were the size of larges back in the UK TBF. Not completely unexpected, but the crazy thing to me was I got two burgers. Two, on just a regular meal? You must have ordered the two cheeseburgers meal, which exists solely to convince consumers that two is greater than one so there must be more food in there. Have had a few. In a Cleveland mall, a guy runs down the elevator towards me and my group of friends yelling you guys from Canada we nervously replied that we were and asked how he could tell. His reply because you all are wearing roots. NYC traveling from JFK to Long Island City on the highway in cab. Get rear-ended. Cabbie and previous driver stop. Get out and look at damage. Don't exchange info and continue on their merry ways. Always get escalator and elevators mixed up. And in regards to the nervousness. 18 years old kids in Cleveland for a business competition. So nerdy as frick. And it's America A. Eh? Who wouldn't be nervous? Well their thinking is that if there's no real damage it's a waste of time to wait hours for the cops to arrive to write a ticket which may result in insurance raising your rate. I've been asked what state Ontario was in, when I told a lady it was a province in Canada. She was confused, like she had never ever heard of Canada. LOL then and do we have Christmas, Halloween and Easter in Canada. You have highways in the Philippines? To be fair there was also a well educated guy who apologized on behalf of his country for the CIA backed dictatorship they put up a while back. Nice guy. Probably an inverted WTF moment, where the Americans would have thought WTF, these foreigners. When I uttered the sentence don't mind him, 
He's just being a bit of a C and received stares as if I had just threatened to blow up the whole office. I tried correcting myself by saying sorry. I meant a freaking prick. Did not improve the situation. C is probably the strongest swear word you can use outside of racial slurs. A classmate in university back in 2003. Do you have computers in India? Did you go to school on your elephant? Yes and yes. That's why it's so easy to ride your mom. My first trip to Walmart I was kind of overwhelmed by the sheer variety and range of food produce they had. And then I looked at a banana stand which was just a plastic stick with a U on top. That's it for $8. Went to Texas to visit some friends. When we got to their place. The first thing they said was wanna see our guns having never seen a real gun in my life. I was pretty excited. They were cool guys. Though they did all have a loaded handgun on their nightstands. We were in a steakhouse somewhere in New Jersey. We told the waitress that we were from Korea. And she said, oh, that's a city in Japan, right? I really want to go to Japan. Our great grandparents were forced out of their land and killed in Manchuria by the Japanese during their occupation of Korea. I had trouble calming my dad down. Pretty much every question I was asked made me go WTF. Do you have running water in New Zealand? Do you have glass windows? Do you have chickens over there? Do you guys have apples? That was asked while they were holding an apple with a sticker saying it was imported from NZ. Why don't you go live on the mainland? I found out after a while that they meant Australia. Also that it's just expected that everyone will exchange their gifts and gift exchange cards are included in the gifts. Here, you get a gift and you freaking like it whether you like it or not. Two moments in the US. When my friend and I decided to drive to downtown LA and we accidentally came across the ghetto. To paint a picture, few hundred of people loitering on per block, tents and rubbish everywhere on the street. The seriously WTF moment was when we literally turned around the block and it was back to cosmopolitan area. People shopping and going on with their lives. Starbucks, but being an Aussie, I got asked where I was from based on my accent. I responded, Australia. Full sincere moment I got asked. Oh Australia, what language do you speak over there? I felt dumbfounded and guilty and said just up. Australian English WTF America WTF. My first trip to the US in 2012 and first stop was Chicago, visiting a friend of my, American, girlfriend who was studying there. So we go out on our first evening to some Asian place, yum, and I order a coke. Wasn't 21 yet. As in Germany you can accumulate quite a bill when drinking a lot of beverages in restaurants. I was not going to drink more than what I needed for the meal. Mind you, we also don't get free water in jail which I think is awesome practice in the US. What is often done when you don't want the waiter rest to ask you for another order of drinks, is to leave some of the beverage in the glass enough that it clearly is not just left over but could still be used to satisfy your thirst. But this works reasonably well in Germany. Now back to the Asian restaurant in Chicago, I did exactly as described above but still, the waiter came and asked if I wanted another coke. I thought to myself well, why not and ordered. He then took my glass which still had this considerable amount of coke in it. So I interrupted him and said wait, no to which he replied no coke and I said yes coke, but this one pointing. Also, which seemed to totally confuse the kind waiter. I then said I would like to order another coke but I would also like to finish this one but was interrupted by my girlfriend who by that point was laughing already and sent the waiter off, leaving me reasonably upset before she could explain to me that non-alcoholic beverages are refilled for free in the US. I knew right that moment that America was everything I ever hoped it would be. 3 see you again soon you magnificent bastard of a country. Americans, when you travel from state to state, do you feel culture shock or do you feel like it's sort of the same culture, and why? I've lived in 6 states now, and crossed the country 4 times. Every once in a while you see more of a shocking situation, but it's rare. Like most have said, urban to rural is a big one. I went from Boston to a town of less than 1000 in Alaska. That was a huge shock, but after settling in a bit you get used to things. I moved from Utah to Ohio. Let me tell you, moving from Utah to any state that doesn't border it is a culture shock in and of itself. The Mormon population drops from the overwhelming majority to almost non-existent. 
I've always gotten the impression Utah is the biggest culture shock in the country though. I'm from Florida but like northern Florida near the capital. Something a lot of non-Floridians don't know is that the in Florida, the further you go north is the further you go south. Basically the northern part is the most southern part and central and southern Florida are more big city metro vibes. People from different regions of the US always seem to be very fascinated with our accents. I went to Vegas for a few days and was asked where I was from several times. I personally don't have as strong of an accent as most people from my area because I went to speech classes growing up, but it made me aware that even though subtle, I have a uniquely Floridian southern accent. There's a culture difference between different regions, but the biggest culture difference in the US is between cities, suburbs, and rural areas. I grew up in a small town in Oregon and live in New York City, but if I drive 20-30 miles up I-87 the areas I see look a heck of a lot more like where I grew up than they do the city. There are some big differences between rural areas in Oregon. Waldport vs Yamhill vs Joseph will show some similarities. Only thing to do around there is drugs, but there are also some noticeable differences, primarily due to climate. Definitely not culture shock but it's definitely a different vibe going from some cities or regions to others. The biggest difference to me is just going from a rural area to a city but I think that can be said in general. Depends on how far you're going. Just heading one state over? Not too much of a difference. Heading all the way across the country? Definitely going to be some difference. The one exception in the northeast is if you stay too long, you start to realize that Rhode Island is just freaking weird. Not visible for the first week or two, but then you really start to question things like what the purpose of coffee milk actually is. Not the same shock as when I visited India or New Zealand or Russia, no. There are certainly regional differences and things you will notice, but uniform enough to not be glaring or startling. Well I live in a smallish town in Texas and I went to New York City a few years ago. It was very different. There was so much to do there and the people there acted much differently too. Crap, you can get a culture shock inside of Texas. Beaumont native is going to stick out like a sore thumb in El Paso. My country is small so I always wonder if Americans feel any different from state to state culturally or not like I do traveling in general. Lived in Maine my entire life and haven't traveled too much out of it except when I was younger. So when I helped my sister-in-law and her two kids move out to San Diego area where my brother was stationed in the Navy, it was a huge shock. Going from a completely whitewashed state to an area where we as white peoples were more the minority was honestly shocking at first. Like I had no issues with it. It was just kind of oh yeah there is diversity outside of New England. I've lived in 5 states and have traveled to a lot. Huge culture shocks. I've lived in Utah, California, Texas, Idaho, and Washington. Huge changes in politics, religions, ways of life, rural versus urban. Washington is all about coffee, music, craft beer and hiking. California is well the glamour of Cali and the beach. Texas is very patriotic but both California and Texas have a lot of Hispanic influences. Utah very small town feel, very friendly, but a lot of religious people. Idaho was very farm why. Trucks, tractors, potatoes. Super small town. As a kid we just rode bikes around on roads that were 50 miles per hour. Running into a rattlesnake was no big deal. There are some things that are the same that I think people who've never traveled don't think about. Street signage follows the same rules across states. Everything's in the same language. Same currency, same general norms in basic interaction. What can be different is lingo, accent, types of restaurant chains or specialty food you'll find, norms and values in human interaction and relationship. That sort of thing that comes out in deeper conversations or staying longer in one place. I've lived in upper midwest, Atlantic south and west coast and haven't experienced culture shock. At least not the way I did moving to eastern Europe and living in western Europe. There was some adjustment though just in jargon language, rhythm of life. I found more difference in work life. East Coast has been accomplishment oriented yet more favorable to employees in work life balance. 
Midwest was all about getting up early and hard work and employers thought you should just be happy to have a job. West Coast was more chill in attitude and generous with benefits but you're still working all night. I work in tech though, so mileage may vary, and work life is just a small example. Dead on about the Midwest work life description. Depends what state you're from. California is a complete bubble, nothing like the other states. Heck, even if you go from a coastal city to a rural part of California you'll notice a difference. There's a culture difference from city to city within the same state lol. Northern and Southern California also feel different. Even Southern California, I grew up behind the orange curtain and it was completely different from LA County or San Diego. Then there is the Inland Empire aka Valley of the Dirt People, aka M capital of the state. We don't talk about Imperial County. I feel like it's more regional for me. I'm from Colorado and Wyoming and Montana kinda have the same vibe along with most of the Rocky Mountain region. I definitely felt the most culture shock on the east coast though. So yes I feel some culture shock but to me it's all regional and not state by state. I agree with this. I grew up in southern Appalachia. NC, TN, VA, SC all feel familiar in parts and more foreign in others. Now I live in the northeast and that was an adjustment. 2. Geography matters more than state line. I was raised and live in the Pacific Northwest. My wife is from the Midwest. Every time we visit her family it is a culture shock to me. Some aspects are good and bad, but it is weird to think that it is the same country. The passive aggressive sarcasm of the Midwest got me. I'm from Southern California and I used to work at a hotel's front desk. Everywhere you look, the people with the most menial jobs are Hispanic older women and men. Housekeepers are overwhelmingly Hispanic ladies. The first time I went to New Orleans, it felt weird seeing a white lady ask me if I needed more towels. I'm Hispanic myself and we definitely live in a bubble here. Sometimes there's actual culture shock within the same state. As a native of western Pennsylvania, traveling to eastern or even central PA entails a weird change in culture mostly centered around what food I can find readily available. Here in Pittsburgh, nobody's ever heard of birch beer but over in Harrisburg, the stuff is everywhere. Same goes with things like mid Worth potato chips, various restaurant chains, Hershey's ice cream and supermarket chains that exist on the other half of the state, but don't exist here, like Wegmans, and vice versa, like Giant Eagle. It does give me a weird isn't this the same state feeling, and I'm having a difficult time articulating why the two halves of the same state feel so distinct from one another, even though I live here. Then you have the whole Pennsylvania Dutch and Amish culture, that simply stops existing on the western half of the state, but is absolutely everywhere to the east. How about the whole soda versus pop thing? If you were to check that old soda versus pop map, this state is divided right down the middle, with pop on the west and soda on the east. It's divided that way too for sports teams. Steelers, Penguins, Pirates to the west, Eagles, Flyers, Phillies to the east. It's divided that way for convenience stores. Sheets on the west, Wawa on the east, and too many other weird little things to list. Even dialects and accents vary wildly between the two halves of this state. Take your average Joe from Philadelphia and a Yenza from Danton Pittsburgh and you'd think they were from two different countries. My theory about all of this is because there's a mountain range that divides our state in half. The Appalachians. And as they say, Pennsylvania feels like Pittsburgh on one end, Philadelphia on the other, and Alabama in between. Or Pennsylvania, as we call it. TL. DR. Yes, there's culture shock between states, and sometimes within the same state. Pennsylvania is weird. The fact that you can drive an hour from America's 6th most populated city, and be in communities that commute via horse and buggy always gets me. I've lived on the west coast and the east coast, New England, and there are differences. It wasn't a shock but it felt off. Then I visited the Midwest, Plains states. And it was like I was in a different country. The dialect, the prices, the conversations, the hospitality expectations, the bumper stickers were all different. No recycling and styrofoam was everywhere. I don't think I've seen a eating establishment give out styrofoam cups since the early 90s, but there they were. 
A few years ago I flew from Pittsburgh to Miami in the middle of winter. It was nearly 0 degrees outside when I got on the plane and I was bundled up tight. When we landed in Florida it was like 80 degrees. Everyone was walking around in shorts and t-shirts. People were lounging on the beach in bikinis and swimming in the ocean. I had never been to Florida before and was not at all expecting such a difference. It was a huge juxtaposition to what I was experiencing just a few hours earlier. It's so disconcerting to step off the plane and suddenly it's summer. What's even more amazing is how quickly you get used to it, and how that does not work the other way around when you go home. Depends on where you're going and how you get there. Going from any non-huge city to NYC? Culture shock. Flying from anywhere to Hawaii? Culture shock. Although in the best way. Driving from say Illinois to Florida? Not so much because driving eases the transition. But also because other than the ocean and some palm trees, it's really not that different. It's not like in Europe where you can have a country next door that's wildly different from you in every way. Our cities mostly look and act similar. It's just little things like the attitude of the people, the weather, the plant life, the nature features etc. There are a few exceptions like I mentioned but I've never experienced true culture shock here other than NYC. I moved from Illinois to Florida via driving and there was definitely a cultural difference. It might not be as stark as other places, but it was a noticeable and welcome change. The only culture shock I ever really experience is when I go to buy beer liquor and discover I'm on one of those wacky states with loony laws. Real examples I've seen that flabbergasted me. At a grocery store. Oh, you're buying beer and food, you'll have to ring the beer up separately and take it out a different door. At a grocery store in a different state, you can't buy beer in grocery stores. At a brewery, we can't legally let you order a flight. You can order two tasters as a time as many times as you want. Would you like to pre-order your next round and I'll drop it off as soon as you finish these? At a brewery, yes, we sell beer to go. But you can't take it out the front door. You have to go out the employee exit and back and keep it in a brown paper bag until you get to your car. At a restaurant bar. Oh, you want bar seating? That's over there behind that curtain. Trying to find a liquor store. Oh, you have to go to a state-run store. But there are only four in the entire state and the closest one is a hundred miles from here. You better hurry. They close at six. At brewery. Sorry. State law says you can't play games or watch TV while drinking craft beer. Considering that I live in a state where pretty much any type of business that wants to can sell alcohol. Grocery stores. Hardware stores, bookshops, clothing stores, etc. And you can buy however much you want, any day of the week, and pretty much any time except the wee hours of the morning. Trying to find a good drink in some of those other states is a culture shock. There are certain spots that are just completely different from everywhere else, but for the most part, the culture shock is between urban rural areas, which you will find even within a state, but it's not comparable to say, between countries in Europe. As a South Carolinian who has lived in a lot of different states, here's what I noticed. They don't serve cold tea in December outside the South, and if you order iced tea from a place that actually has it, they probably won't serve it pre-sweetened. Imo. Weak cold bitter water is not refreshing. So I learned to drink plain water or maybe lemonade to get my sugar fix. I started drinking a lot more coffee for caffeine. Barbecue served in states not famous for their barbecue will be covered in sicky sweet ketchup. Don't order it unless you're at a highly recommended barbecue joint. The sketchier the better. Grits aren't standard breakfast food outside the south let alone reconfigured for every meal, and most white Americans don't serve everything over either rice or grits. Manners are different in different regions. In some places, the rudest thing you can do is waste someone's time. In others, not acknowledging someone's existence is the height of tackiness. But people are just as willing to help you anywhere. Other people don't call shopping carts buggies and some Yankees will fight you for calling all carbonated sugar water coke. But only buttholes will pretend not to understand that tennis shoes and sneakers are the same dang thing. Also fixing to isn't a common way to say about to outside the south and people will laugh at you for using it. They'll actually just laugh at disparage your accent and dialect more generally. She crab soup and hop in genre to SC what white barbecue sauce is to owl or coffee milk is to RI. A delicious but very local delicacy. Actually, I am glad my mom taught me how to cook. 
because a lot of what I eat every day just isn't a thing in the rest of America, or it's made so differently as to not resemble what I'm used to. The biggest shock for me was discovering that black people really do make up a minority of the population in many parts of the country. It was kind of uncanny valley to be in a grocery store and not see as many black faces as white. I'm from the low country and moved to the Midlands. Whenever I travel outside of SC or the southeast, it is astonishing to not see that many black people. It feels oddly gentrified and divided. Here, everyone is pretty evenly represented in public. There isn't particularly strong culture lines based on the state lines. Culture there is a bit more once you look at larger areas though. I've lived in Ohio, Wisconsin and Minnesota and haven't had any culture shock. My brother who moved to Los Angeles did though. Think someone in this thread said it best. There isn't necessarily cultural differences between states but there can be between regions and between rural and urban. If you go to the coastal states from the central states, it's a whole other country. If you go to extreme south from extreme north, it's very different. But for the most part, in the middle the accents change a bit. But we're all just people going about our normal lives. If I go from a city in the United States to a city on the other side of the country, the culture shock is not very large. Some accents, some changes in local eateries, some changes in the specific reason why the local drivers are literally the worst drivers in the country, but nothing that feels shocking. Now, if you go to a different city, and then get in a car and drive an hour outside of town, there is culture shock. I feel much more out of place, in a way that I distinctly don't feel an hour outside of my own city. The funny thing is, when I return from a faraway rural area back to its nearby city, the differences that I already noticed in the city make more sense. There are differences between regions, but they're more muted in large cities. I live in Virginia and my dad lives in California so the first time I visited it was way way different. Where I live everyone smiles at each other and says hi and stuff like that and when I smiled I would get weird looks and would get weird looks in general with him since he has red hair and blue eyes and I'm obviously biracial. You can only tell they're related if you actually look at our features. The traffic was absolutely awful, and the Walmarts had everything locked up depending on where you were shopping and that isn't at all what it's like where I live. There's other things as well, but those are what come to mind. When I went to New York when I was younger it wasn't too much of a culture shock. People were super nice. It was just very fast paced compared to where I lived. But other than those two places that's about it. It just depends on where you're from and where you go. When I first moved to Texas for college from New Jersey, I visited a Whataburger. I mentioned it was my first time in Texas to the cashier, and he literally shook my hand and welcomed me to the state. People waved from across the street with their whole hands, and not just their middle fingers. It was beautiful. The biggest differences I see are yard decorations, regional fast food outlets, and convenience stores, and package stores, ice houses, or whatever. They all have local snacks and drinks like goo goo clusters, pulled pork in a crock pot, or big red soda. Store setup is usually different by state. 2. Picnic tables, tables and chairs, or nothing for eating outside. Oh, and lottery tickets that are cheesy, but in a different cheesy than your state. Not usually but you can definitely see differences in people's attitudes. We moved from Illinois to the Boston area and I was working as a restaurant manager. I would apply my typical Midwestern friendliness but the people on the East Coast just didn't get it until they got used to it. I would walk through the dining room and ask if I can take people's trays out of their way for them and people would straight up ask my why I want their trash. Then we moved back to Illinois and now to Texas and the people here are sometimes over the top friendly. Before COVID hit and we would go out to eat. It wasn't out of the question to have a table near you strike up a conversation with you. My brother and I were driving through middle of nowhere northern Louisiana on our way to Florida once. And we saw a prisoner chain gang. White guard on a horse with a shotgun. Maybe 10-15 prisoners. All black. Out in a field picking cotton. I asked my brother if we had accidentally traveled 150 years into the past. You'll probably pass near Angola State Penitentiary. It used to be a plantation but turned into a prison. So it basically stayed the same. As a non-American, 
I'm sure it must feel different. England feels drastically different between London S East versus Merseyside versus North East, and the entire UK fits inside Texas multiple times over. That's three and a third countries combined that equal the size of Czechs, Oregon. It'd be surprising if there weren't some noticeable differences even within states. You get more of a shock going rural to metropolitan, and can do that without leaving a state. I grew up in a rural farming area, live in a small urban area now. There was some adjustments but I got used to it. Going to Manhattan or Philadelphia is a huge change. It's a totally different experience. Just the sheer amount of people, which leads into traffic patterns while trying to drive. I live in coastal Maine. Many tourists from all over the world in the US are shocked by how green everything is. Green as in there are trees everywhere. I never really understood that, because everywhere has trees, but since traveling around a bit I now understand why some people were so shocked. We don't have highways everywhere. Only certain main streets are illuminated with street lights while most other roads don't have any. The air is very clean compared to other states, and yes. There are way more freaking trees here than any other state I've been around casually. And I guess the seafood is nice lol. I'm in the dusty, brown, flat part of Texas, and my wife is a New Englander. When we go visit her family, we always try to drive up and spend a few days in Portland or Kennebunk. Don't ever take the green and the water for granted. Oh my gosh yes. Especially the food. I live in Cape Cod, Mass now and I was living in Philadelphia. PA before, I would never get a cheese steak here just like I'd never buy a lobster roll in Philly. Depends on which state you're going to. Some states have a very distinct feel, like New Mexico or Louisiana, which have a pretty distinct cuisine and culture that you don't find in other states. I think it's also about urban non urban. I live near Chicago, and Indiana definitely feels different, but so does downstate Illinois. I would say much of downstate Illinois has more in common with Indiana or Iowa than it does with the Chicago area. I don't feel as much of a cultural change going to Milwaukee as I do going to Peoria, for example. Some observations from my travels. In the border towns in Texas, I have generally been greeted in Spanish at sit-down and fast food restaurants. English is the second language down there. Most everyone is brown Hispanic. New York has some of the most attractive business class looking people I've seen just very well put together and fit. What stands out about Alabama and other the southern states is how nicely dressed everyone is. The women wear nice floral sundresses and the men have nice haircuts and button up shirts. There's an Alabama look that can be described as outdoorsy below the belt and dressed up above the belt. Blue jeans. Cowboy boots. A button-up shirt and sweater vest with a ball cap. You can spot an Alabama man from a distance sporting this style. Wisconsiners are probably the friendliest bunch. They'd be most likely to make friends with a complete stranger and invite them to a barbecue. Southerners are the most polite, but keep you at a distance. You almost have to marry into the culture to feel like you're really one of them. Rhode Island has its own names for everyday things, but shares the Boston accent, which is hands down the best drinking at a bar accent. Seattle was so cloudy every time I've been there that it feels dark and surprisingly claustrophobic with the hills and trees. If you want some depressing entertainment, go to the McDonald's in downtown Seattle and watch the drug addicts. Best brightest city I've ever been to is Charleston, SC. That place is cool great history, architecture and food. Moved from Chicago area to SC Texas in 1981. Huge culture shock. Accents. Honky tonks. Frontage roads. Giving shoulder. Big hair. Gun racks. Made great friends. Still visit since moving away 34 years ago. I live in Texas, but my whole life have visited family in upstate New York. I would say it is completely different but not a huge shock. Everyone speaks their mind in New York because people get less offended by what you say. They have a totally different accent. Less accent than most Texans. They don't know what having BBQ means. They just cook on the barbecue grill sometimes. This may be just where I was specifically but once I was old enough to drink the gas station workers seemed very judgmental when I bought a six pack. Coke is not a generic term for soda up there. They call it pop. There are a lot of differences so I would say there might be culture shock. Most places in NY say soda. 
pop is a Buffalo Rochester thing. When I was 4 years old, I cried inconsolably because we were taking a family trip to Rhode Island and I thought I wouldn't speak the language there, to cheer my up. My dad taught me to speak with a New England accent and then assured me I was fluent. It depends on how far out you go. Pennsylvania to New Jersey would have much less of a culture shock than probably going to Texas or California. But it also depends if you live in an urban or suburban area. I didn't when I used to live in California, but we're in Alaska now, and going back to California definitely feels like a culture shock. It's so busy and materialistic, it definitely takes me a few days to get sorted and readjust. As an old guy, it used to be a significant culture shock to travel between states. Today, not so much. Apart from the likes of NYC and San Francisco, everywhere is pretty much the same. What with the gap? Starbucks, fast food places, etc. The interstate highway system also changed things up as you longer went through communities. I live in Texas so there's definitely a culture shock in any direction. West is New Mexico with a beautiful blending of American Indian and Spanish vibe. A trip east leads to Louisiana and the French Canadian or Cajun ambience. South is the country of Mexico which is also a which is beautiful and amazing for so many reasons. But north to Oklahoma is the biggest culture shock of all because it's like going back in time to American in the 1950s. I live in CO, and there are so many people who move here from around the country. We have a booming tech industry in my area specifically, that when I visited Boston last year it didn't really feel that different to me. Folks say that people here are super friendly, but when I visited Boston I didn't think people were rude, just efficient with their time and commuting. That and the slightly older history were the biggest differences. In CO, something from the mid late 1800s is really old. Going to Boston and seeing stuff that dates to the late 1700s and earlier was super cool. Not the same as when I visited Rome and saw things that were thousands of years old, but still different from home. The guy who murdered 8 people had a bad day. What the f is wrong with Americans? Okay first of all some guy decides out of the blue that he wants to kill people. He doesn't go to a specific place. He goes to 3 separate places and kills people in each one. Then when he gets caught part of the explanation given by the authorities for this act of disgusting violence is he had a bad day. Excuse me. What the frick. You know who had a bad day. Everyone at the places he shot. And you know who really had a bad day. The 8 people who got killed and the 2 who got shot but survived and their families. I'm actually serious because that kind of mass shooting doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. Or at least not in a developed country. The mass shooting. The explanation. What the frick. Edit. I do realize this cop or that shooter don't represent all of Americans. My point was there are so many shootings happening in the USA. Even school children. Kids fight. Hit each other. But murder. Seriously. I think murder is kind of just another Wednesday here in the USA. Murdering a person is freaking horrific thing. I can't even imagine the fear you experience when you're doing something normal as just going to the mall or school and live through a shooting. This is not war zone where you expect to be shot at. Edit 2. Some people have used the he's white so media and authorities try to defend him. Which is another thing that's put too much thought into. Who cares about his race or gender? I personally don't give a frick whether he was white, yellow, orange or blue. He is a freaking psycho. My point was that on one hand mass shootings like this are not a rare occurrence in the USA. And on the other, the person who spoke to the media said something so incredibly stupid and honestly disrespectful. Imagine hearing that a loved one was shot because a murderer had a bad day. Just tell it how it is. A freaking psycho who had easy access to guns because of your laws went out on a shooting spree. Edit 3. Just to answer collectively on a lot of comments that repeat each other. To the peeps who keep saying and repeating we're not all like that. Yes, we know. But a German saying we're not all like that in 1942 wouldn't make Germany look any better now, would it? To the people who understood me and tried to answer the question without feeling personally offended. Because they can rationally think it through and realize that while not all Americans are like that and they are definitely not like that. There is an actual problem in your country. Thank you for your comment.
To the people who use stats presenting that gun related deaths are around 30,000 people a year of which only about 2% are incident related. This guy killed 8 people. Assume this happens every month for a year that's 96 people. Out of 30,000 that's less than 1%. In numbers that might not sound bad, but a mass shooting every month is definitely bad. Not implying that's the case, just making a point about only 2%. To the people who attacked me and my post based on my presumable race, what the freak, to the grammar and perfectly correct people, yes, by Americans I meant people from the USA, even though there's North, South and Central America, my post was about an event that happened in the USA where people are also American so I thought that was clear, sorry for your confusion. Final edit, to the people saying I live in privilege outside of the USA and they have to live through this daily, what kind of fricked up brainwash minds do you have to think that not living in fear of getting shot at is a privilege? Do you see what I mean when I ask what is wrong with you? You've lived through so much gun related violence you think people not living in it are privileged. No they're not, it's how basic life should be. You had a freaking riot and stormed the capital because some of you, not a small number, didn't agree with the results of the vote for president, but mass shootings, we just live in it daily, you privileged butthole. I live in a fricked up eastern European country where we don't have the best education, we don't have much opportunity for success, the quality of life is low, but yes I live in privilege, good god. And to the people who say mass shootings happen everywhere all the time but we don't hear about it because media has USA as the center of the world, number, in Europe and I assume the rest of the world, we barely have covered any news since your president election and riots. And most if not all American news coverage is politically related. I feel like you're missing the point here. They aren't trying to justify the shooting like you make it sound. It sounds to me like they're making an important distinction. Was the shooting meticulously planned out? Or was it done out of spur of the moment rage? Having a bad day lends itself to the conclusion that it was more of a random act of mental instability blowing up and not carefully put together to send a message. I think that's the real key here. You do realize that the average American does not share the opinion of the one random cop who was that department's spokesperson, right? At least in my online and in-person circles. Everyone is just as outraged and horrified. Americans are not just what you see on the news. First of all, there are 330-ish million of us. One hick sheriff said that, it's not like it was an official statement vetted by the government. People on the internet would be well served to realize that the 1 1000 people who say stupid crap are not representative of the world at large. It's like when something is a big deal on Reddit or Twitter. 99.5% of the population has no clue what they're talking about. Honestly somebody saying something stupid isn't indicative that the person is an idiot. People say stupid stuff all the time not to mention misspeak or just not fully think out what they say all of the time. Something something 300 million people. That's a lot of people. You can find poop eaters and dog screwers and all kinds of mentally disturbed people in a group that size. It's a tragedy, but we can't act like it's an American thing. But regular mass shootings are an American thing. Also the examples listed are self-harmful at worst, not a danger to the rest of the population. Hey, look, another all-American suck thread. It's not about the shooter and what a piece of crap he is. It's what's wrong with Americans. What is wrong with Americans? Hum. No mental health care access. No job security, no representation in government, a corporate dominated media intent on splintering the working class into antagonistic factions, daily reminders of the ecological genocide but no attempt to slow down the causes, the prospect of another 20 years of unwinnable wars, the domination of economic power over state and citizenry, increasingly lower standard Let freedom ring. It is an act of anomic despair. People realize society is crumbling, but their miseducation has them direct their anger towards the other, pointed out by the very people degrading the country. Same with school shootings. The Columbine shooters claimed to be bullied yet they literally were calling people racial slurs and other derogatory terms. Fucked shot themselves because they were too pushed to face jail time. 
The fact that white mass murderers even have the option to kill themselves is fricked up. Black guys get shot for almost jaywalking or entering their own homes while a white guy killing 8 Asians gets arrested without a problem. Americans are not the issue. Most of us hate this as much or worse than you, we have to live in a country that's like this. The problem isn't the people, it's our off the rails system. We're forced to work for often below a living wage. Most of us cannot afford basic health care much less mental health care. Half the country thinks that working hard is the way to success when really, privilege and who you know is the only guarantee. And 99% of the wealth is controlled by buttholes like Jeff Bezos. Throw in highly toxic religious views that repress natural instincts and desires, and give easy access to guns and what you have is a powder keg that only needs a match, the match being violent, and stable people unable to get help or even see that they need it due to tomorrow terrible education system. The problem isn't us, it's the greedy buttholes running our country. What's worse, the shooter explained that Asian massage salons are sources of evil sexual temptation and they tempted him and must be destroyed. Stop generalizing all Americans as being the same. Most of us are just as, if not more, outraged by the many flaws of our country. I believe most of us want real change. The amount of generalization us Americans get is wild. It's like people from Europe assume the US is the size of Switzerland and has a tiny population or something. Maybe it's the matter of how these cases are publicized in USA, probably happens in other developed countries but I sometimes wonder if some media outlets put it out there to seek outrage and bigger social reaction. Oh okay haha I got you up you meant to say haha me quirky redditor is also sharing the same feelings literally everyone else who's witnessed what happened has. This time though I'm going to be quirky and ask Americans what's wrong with them on a subreddit that you know to ensure it doesn't belong in to get karma and updates. Also it'll also just group in every single American with something one person said that wasn't official and nobody agrees with. Nice karma farm. You know most people think the sheriff is ridiculous for saying that right? His views aren't representative of the American attitude on this horrible act of terrorism. You're not adding anything to the conversation. You're just spewing a rant that most people already agree with. Yes, this was a racist act of terrorism. Yes, the sheriff is an absolute racist moron for saying the shooter had a bad day. What's the point of saying what the F is wrong with Americans? In answer to your title, half our leaders are absolute freaking dipshits who keep defunding basic education, so half our population, minimum, are absolute freaking morons who prioritize opinions and how it feels over evidence and facts. This will get buried in the mountains of replies, but still, the ownership of firearms is a deeply entrenched part of American culture, like freedom of speech and unquestioning respect of anyone in the military. The American media does fire best to treat mass shootings like natural disasters. Unavoidable, inevitable, and definitely not something that we could ever put an end to. Treating them any other way would bring too much backlash. Most Americans are good hard-working people, but there are still a lot of idiots that get a lot coverage that make it seem like we are all idiots. Go to Honduras. If you come out alive make another post, I'm not even American, but do people realize how freaking big USA is and how many inhabitants they have? Murder is just another Wednesday that is such a load of crap. Just come out and say I hate America no need for that big butt text. And it won't get better till we look at the mental health crisis. Nobody looks at it. Nobody wants to. It's a long term, messy, painful fix that will take a while. So here's what we do. We ban gun or two or restrict them in some way and declare victory. We never even stop and look at or do anything to think. Why the heck someone decided to murder another person? Why did they not get help? Hum. Here is an example to help you. Had a young family member who was on meds to stabilize during some mental challenges. She had a reaction to them. As in a medical reaction to them. Went to the air. Do you think they treated the medical condition? The hives? Her throat closing up? You know the potentially life-threatening condition? Nope. They saw she was on drugs for mental health. They assigned the 16 years old girl a male security guard. Had him go into a room with her to strip, so she could not hurt herself, and change into a gown. Two hours later, 
Her drug reaction calmed down on its own because the hospital never treated it. But that is the state of mental health treatment in the US and we wonder why we miss people who are mentally ill. Why they never look for help until they are so damned sick they are murdering people. But we have not done a damned thing a single thing to address that. With this shooter, we will ban some guns, add a background check or two, maybe restrict carrying weapons so you can't carry them in salons, and we will maybe even name the bill after one of the victims. In the end though, we will never deal in a mental health system that allowed a man like this to fall into an abyss where he framed a mindset that left 8 people dead and 2 injured. That is why this will continue. That is why these shootings will continue. I think my biggest issue with this whole thing isn't just the he had a bad day narrative, but also that it was obviously a hate crime. From what I can get from the news, all of the people he killed were Asians or people of race. Them trying to pass this 21 year old man as a kid and making him sympathetic to the public is disgusting. If you want to kill Asians, shoot up an engineering class at literally any university. If you want to kill prostitutes in broad daylight, shoot up any Asian massage parlor. It's pretty obvious why he targeted them. Race might have been some kind of factor, but I can't see that being an assumption. Guess who has the most stabbinger in the world? China, then India, then the US. People want to be violent. They just don't have the same obsessive gun culture and lack of mental health awareness as us. Combine that with far more cultural diversity than anywhere in the world and people just aren't going to get along. In reality, the thing that the world shares in common that has killed many billions more than guns is religion. Don't say my country doesn't have this problem. Without saying your country, America is in a bad way right now and I have no idea what a viable solution is. I still love it and will try to make it a better place. Frick violence and hate. You realize the US is number 55 on the list of homicides when accounting for populations, right? Places like Mexico have 5x the homicides per 100,000 people and Russian is nearly double. Not saying that makes it okay, not by a long shot, but the US has a huge population compared to other countries besides China and India. We have just over 5 homicides per 100,000 people, not the number OP presented. Of course the US is one of the highest first world countries with homicides, which is definitely an issue. Places like the UK and Germany has less than 2 murdered per 100,000 people. Well the random American doesn't feel like that, and when it comes to mass shootings really really don't have that many. If you cut out 5 metropolitan cities, then our gun crime rate drops in half. Nothing. Only the guy and police said he had a bad day not all of America. ISTG people just need to stop being like, all Americans are the same her sure. Don't worry the two that survived will probably have it worse than the people who died because of the medical debt they'll likely have to pay off for the rest of their lives. Yet, yeah, I doubt the trauma they will deal with day after day for years to come will be more difficult than blowing off some medical debt. It's going to continue to happen. No one is ever going to take care of this problem. We are simply learning to become numb and live with it and hopes are never in the crossfire of it. I'm from Vegas where we had the worst mass shooting in us history Route 91. Back in 2018. I remember our sheriff told us to always be vigilant wherever we go and always look for the nearest exit whenever we're out and about. And sadly that's what I do whenever I'm anywhere. Friends have called me paranoid. But you never know nowadays. It's become the new normal. Last year was the only year we probably didn't have mass shooting because of the lockdown. But wait until everything is lifted and we're all cleared to go out. Just wait. He'll get sympathy because he was a confirmed incel. Some men find it easier to justify why a man would murder 8 random women than why a woman wouldn't want to sleep with them. I don't appreciate being associated with that fucktard who went on the rampage or some of our stupid cops. Not every American goes on a shooting rampage. In fact these sadistic fricks are the extreme minority. But you're not likely to hear a headline that someone didn't go on a rampage. No you will see stories about the people who did. And America has a frick ton of people. Meaning we have a frick ton of buttholes who do this. And Reddit is majority American. Like it or not. So you will see more coverage of this here. So we are not all sick fricks who murder minorities when our sexual frustration becomes too much. And you can go post that on till because the title suggests you didn't know that till now. 
If you don't think mass killings happen throughout the world, you should read more about life outside the USA. Holy crap. Using the term American this way shows some type of anti-American sentiment that is almost akin to racism. Americans are not all alike. America is not filled with people who all share similar beliefs. Why do bad Americans have to represent all Americans crap is getting old. There are really good people here. Stop watching the news so much. Frick off with this what's wrong with Americans bulls. I'm all for ostracizing and prosecuting pieces of crap like that guy but you need to get the frick off your high horse. So sick of people seeing the worst of our country and thinking well clearly that's just all of them how would you like it if we started judging you by the worst of your country but. 1. How does this post make it up but I need 15 iterations just to avoid the auto mod. 2. The interviewer asked what the guy's motive was and the cop replied with what the shooter had said. They weren't the cop's opinions it was the shooter's justification that the interviewer asked for. 3. Screw you you pompous prick. If this is a common opinion among Europeans then our 24 stroke 7 news has legitimately become a national security risk. It's one thing to make us pointlessly afraid for clicks. It's another thing when it makes us look like bloodthirsty savages. Russia couldn't pay for better propaganda. Our systems ran and made generally by liberals cause extreme mental issues. Our schools are worse than our prisons and our prisons make innocent and non-violent people into murders and killers. Anyone who wants to reform those systems are called racists and fascists for some reason. Our government is filled with two opposing corrupt sides and anyone who isn't corrupt is butchered by the media which for some reason people still listen to. That's what's wrong with us. I had the benefit of reading through your original post and all updates and edits. His race does matter here because it highlights two things. 1. Almost all mass shootings that take place in the US are by white men too. There has been a huge uptick in violence against Asian Americans over the past year. Which just so happens to coincide with Trump's made up verbiage of the China virus in reference to COVID-19. Guns law and access is a huge problem across the board. There is way too much gun violence in the US generally speaking. But most of it is within the same demographic and not all is fatal. It all sucks. As a resident trust me, it's not fun when you hear gunshots on a near daily basis living in a city by the way, I do live in Atlanta which is where this massacre took place. Poor or no mental health resources, paired with easy gun access, and combined with a growing xenophobic, nationalist, extremist population is not a winning recipe. You have a very skewed idea of America, obviously. Shootings are incredibly rare here, no matter what Reddit tells you. It's not the wild west here where every spat ends in gunfire. In fact, the majority of counties in the US have exactly zero homicides annually. What scores up our average is a handful of tiny inner city areas, with strict gun control, might I add, that have an extreme level of gun violence. Kind rude that you said Americans instead of the sheriff, but I agree he did a terrible thing and there should be no excuses. What the frick is wrong with people who judge a whole country because of the acts of a few? Seriously though, I know you've responded to this, but just wanted to add my frick you, too. The cops repeated the excuse the shooter said verbatim as they often do but the news spun in it as the official position of the police. You have been fooled like so many us. We are like puppets except easier manipulate into yelping and stomping. We are all hopped up on Mountain Dew. Doritos and McDonald's. It's all we know. People kill other people sometimes. It sucks. This kind of crap doesn't just happen in America though. People all over the world, for the history of people, kill other people. Sometimes it's described as war. Sometimes a crusade. Sometimes oppression. Sometimes it's in the name of peace, land, money, oh. And sometimes people are just bat crap crazy. Plenty of serial killers in other countries. The most prolific in fact. End countryism. God I wish someone was there to stop that madman. I ma take a hot take. I wish more good guys were armed. Someone could have stopped him. That's what the guy said, not the cop. The cop was just repeating it to the news. You're taking one bad apple and applying it to everyone. Why do you people assume most Americans are the same based off a small group? 
It's very annoying how many questions just stereotypes all Americans to be just the same. I understand it's not all oh shut up you know exactly what you're doing. The enormous amount of edits and defensive statements are because of the phrasing of your question. What the f is wrong with Americans? You should be asking is there something wrong with Americans that cause this to occur exclusively there? Your question implies that there is something wrong and that of course elicits many defensive responses from people who take it as a personal attack. The exact same can be phrased of any group and any population in the world. In response to specifically your question, Americans as with any population in any nation have the same occurrence on average of mental health problems. The difference is in America, there is a much easier access to firearms and this creates the possibility of tragedies such as this to occur. But no, saying not all Americans, is not even remotely close to not all Germans. In 1942, some of the German public was in the dark or denial of what was happening but by and large there was widespread xenophobia that led to literal genocide. People knew their neighbors were being rounded up but never asked where they went or what happened to them. You have to remember, by the end of the war nearly 31% of the German population had served in the military. People knew. This head in sand mentality is entirely different than not all Americans, which in this case literally means exactly that. Not all Americans suffer from mental health issues. Not all Americans believe in universal access to firearms. Most believe in sensible access and sensible use in fact. The problems are mental health and the stigma for getting help. The ease of access to firearms. To answer the non-inflammatory question you should have asked. Is there something wrong with Americans? The gun control and mental health crisis facing America are difficult and complex issues. They are complicated by the difficulties that come with amending our constitution and making welfare programs more available. Is there something wrong specifically with the American population that make this a uniquely American problem? Number. Your question is based on a snapshot view of American culture and prejudices you already have. It isn't in fact a question that anyone is too afraid to ask it's a rhetorical question with inflammatory and xenophobic implications undertones. All of this boils to two main issues down, mental health, and the associated non-help you receive because health insurance, and gun laws gun security. I have the feeling to buy a weapon you have to pay 100 bucks for your first gun and that's it. Introducing a background check and a mental stability test would be a first step. Health insurance and overhaul of gun laws. Fight for it guys, it's your country. Yesterday I've seen on reddit a guy who was bullied by his neighbors and couldn't do anything against it. The video footage I saw shows the street and how he simply kills these neighbors. First with a pistol and when the pistol doesn't do the magic he goes back into the house to get his AR-15. Another shows how a man shot by his GF in their car. They have an argument, nothing big. Just by coincidence she shoots him in the head. If you want to change something you have to mute the distraction and noise. The root of gun violence is growing out of the issues I already mentioned. I think wording this what the frick is wrong with America instead of what the frick is wrong with Americans would make it a little less offending to people. People who have visited the US. What is your WTF America story? When I was living in California back in the late 90s minus 2000. The news came on and announced that one of the stories would be NATO starts bombing Kosovo. I turned the news up, only to have to sit through the more important story first. Out of season rain in LA. I was talking to a girl years ago about the US. It was around the 4th of July. I'm British. She's American. She wished me a happy the 4th of July. I told her we don't T celebrate that in the UK. She didn't know understand why. Good riddance day, as we call it when our American friends celebrate it here. An excuse for food, drink and a party so I'm all for it. Okay, I think people who do this are stupid, but I see the need to join their ranks. A capital T. Just got back from Miami. Told a woman who was walking her cat that my girlfriend and I thought her cat was cute. She then told us she is not a prostitute, and nor was the cat. As an American. That's just a weird response. Also catwalkers tend to be somewhat strange, says the girl debating on buying a leash for her cat. A friend of mine lived in Virginia for some years for school and the locals. It was an average sized town, not some hillbilly shithole. Asked him if we had cars, electricity, internet or fridges in Luxembourg. 
Anyone asking? Of course we don't have those things in Luxembourg. That's how we became one of the richest countries on earth. By staying in the stone age. Don't let anyone fool you to think we all have glass fiber internet and government paid education and healthcare that includes massages. It's all lies. We all live under a rock. Mine was on the flight home. We just landed. And I overheard the following exchange. Mom, where are we? Amsterdam. It's in Germany. Well at one point in time she wasn't too wrong. I'm from Sweden. And visited New York a few summers ago with my family. We had just gotten off the bus. And my stepsister was feeling really nauseous from the bus ride. She walks up to a garbage can and takes a few deep breaths. Trying to not vomit. Suddenly a guy in a suit with a briefcase walks up. Asks if she's alright. Tells her to wait there. And comes back a few seconds later with a bottle of water for her. Just a complete stranger. That's not something you'd see in Sweden. I went to the US this summer to work for my uncle's company in LA for 8 weeks. I'm currently studying at university in the UK. I decided to fly up to San Francisco to visit my cousin for the weekend and flew from LAX. After my return flight I was about to exit the LAX American terminal when all the police around me got their guns out and started shouting about a shooter at the airport. Chaos erupted around me with people everywhere throwing their suitcases to the floor and screaming. I had no idea what to do. I had just bought a tea from Starbucks and I didn't really want to throw it on the floor and run about so I followed this stampede of people through the terminal. I found a room to hide in with 20 other people. We all lay on the floor being quiet trying to stay calm. People all around me calling their loved ones saying their goodbyes. It was insane. I didn't have any service on my AT&T phone so I just sat there drinking tea contemplating what I would do if a gunman appeared. I realize now it was the most British thing to do at that moment. We were in there for 25 minutes when we got told it was clear. All of this happened because the police heard a loud noise and there was someone dressed as Zorro which raised suspicions. WTF America. They have bank drive throughs They go to the bank like they go to McDonald's. Saw them in New Jersey, around 5 years ago. One summer when we visited some friends out in Tennessee and we're eating fresh deer he'd shot that afternoon off his BBQ. Drinking beer and sharing differences in culture. At which point out of nowhere he pulls out a pallet gun and shoots a squirrel from the top of a phone line. He then proceeded to cut, wash, clean and cook the squirrel. Tasted like chicken. I have no doubt that if there was a global apocalypse it might take Tennessee a few years to notice. And only because they stopped making more Bud Light. The food. Holy crap. Me and my sister would occasionally share meals because there was so much of it. And there'd still be loads left behind. As an American I don't understand this. I usually eat all of my food. Whoa. I'm 14. 5 ft 6 inches and weigh 101 pounds. Not overweight by any means. But I couldn't having the McDonald's medium be the large. The flags man. The flags. I used to joke with my mom that if my career doesn't work out I'm just gonna open a flag shop in the US. My dad lives in America. And I visited him for the first time in 10 years last September. The first thing he did was take me to the local police gun range, where I was told how to fire a fully automatic assault rifle, a semi-automatic rifle, and a variety of pistols. They didn't even know my name and they put a gun in my hands and told me to shoot at a target. Best freaking day ever. That's the American dream right there. Visited Miami a few years ago with a friend. We started a brief conversation with the hotel porter and told him we were from London. He goes hey I know some British slang. Throughout our stay whenever he saw us we were greeted with hey. What's up wankers and good morning you miserable C. Was hilarious. Back in the 90s I was in San Francisco. In Australia I had never seen a beggar. But there were heaps of them in San Francisco. Anyway. I was walking around. And this beggar comes up to me shaking his can full of coins in my face. He never said a word. Just shook his can in my face. So I said to him, no thanks mate, I've got enough coins of my own. He gave me a look of WTF. That is my WTF America story. I'm definitely using this one sometime. Stayed at a hotel in New York and the TV had only one program. 
commercials for medicine, and the style of the TV spots was outrageous, as if they were selling magic pills. Here is the conversation I had with a cashier in a Dunkin Donuts in Ohio. Her. Are you deaf? You speak funny. Me. Hum. I have an accent. I'm French Canadian. Her. What do you mean? Me. Well. English isn't my first language. Her. So you're not deaf? Because you speak really slowly. And in a weird way. Me. It's a French accent. Her. Okay. I understand. Okay. It's a Canadian accent. Weird. I mean, they weren't wrong. It is a Canadian accent. First city I came to in US was to LA, and went to Malibu Beach with a friend. My first reaction was I was told there would be fat people. Everyone were fit as frick. I was ashamed to take off my shirt. Ah, yeah. See fat people don't go to the beach. As a fat person, I can confirm this. If we do. We spend all our time in at least shoulder depth water while we stare at the beautiful beach bodies we'll never get to touch. I was in Ella 2002, went into a petrol station in Inglewood on my way to West Hollywood. There was an old Korean guy behind the counter and one middle aged white woman shopping. Two minutes after I walked in a low rider with five black guys rolled into the station. Now I'm black but I'm from London but these guys looked gangster as heck and were all black. Four of them walked into the shop while one was pumping petrol. The moment they walked in they started swearing at the old Korean guy, cussing him out. This went on for half a minute. Me and the old white lady looked at each and both thought this place was going to get robbed. The old Korean guy was standing behind the counter and had this calm look on his face the whole time and as soon they were done swearing he just came out said you black soul eating mother suckers need shut your big lips cause I don't understand one word of what you just said. Everything went quiet and I started to crouch down thinking this where I'm going to die. Just as I started to hide all the black guys burst out laughing and were falling all over each other and the old Korean man was laughing as well. It turns out this how they greet each other every time they come into the shop. Me the old white lady had the exact same look of relief on our faces. It was like seen out of Russia. First time visiting New York City. On our first night. My wife and I stayed at a hotel just through the tunnel in New Jersey. We're just leaving a diner to walk back to our hotel when a bakery van is t-boned right in front of us by a speeding sedan. The van is hit so hard that it flips over, spilling stuff everywhere. The sedan, half totaled, spins around and begins to speed off. My wife and I are sprinting towards the van. As the driver is still inside, I stop to try and get the plate number of the hit and runner as he speeds past us. And he nearly kills me in the process. The driver of the bakery van is stumbling injured down the sidewalk while his smoking vehicle lies on its side in the middle of the intersection. My wife is screaming call 9, 1, 1, as we try to get him to sit down and rest. He's in shock, mumbling about how he's going to be late for work. State cops and an ambulance showed up pretty quickly. They took statements from us about the hit and run, and took my photo within the process. The Canadian. How the cop asked, staying in town here? Yeah, I replied it's our first night. The cop smirks at me and goes what do you think so far? I lived in the Midwest as a kid but I am Australian. I had a woman who genuinely thought we took a bridge to get to America from Australia. I had a teacher who would not let me into the classroom in the morning unless I said a dingo stole my baby I was in grade 2 and had no clue what it meant. This same teacher would make me recite the Pledge of Allegiance. My sister showed up on the first day of school to find the discipline corner was Australia, with a badly drawn map that didn't include Tasmania, because that was where the convicts go. And lastly the men are people, children and adults, asking me if we rode kangaroos. That discipline corner should be enough to report the teacher, because as Aussies we hate foreigners reminding our convict history. Walking into a supermarket and seeing the endless cereal lanes and the amount you can choose from, blew my mind. Also when I was working in a camp over a summer, I was devastated to see that the people who ran the place would actually choose to use throwaway dishes, cups and cutleries instead of normal ones. I don't know if that's typical, but it sure hurt my eco-protecting side to see all the waste just one day would generate. Had a good time though. 15 year old me. Took a trip to a Walmart near Cap Cod. 
Firstly your skittles are different UK. Grape equals blackberry. Apple equals lime. And grape candy is weird. Secondly. My father saying man all the fat people must be a myth followed by a morbidly obese man on a scooter who also happened to be a shriner. Yet his scooter had horrific anti-Arab text on it. Back in the good old days Skittles used to have lime instead of apple in the US. Then 9-11 happened and nothing was the same. I went to the Daytona 500 in 2008. An obese lady sitting next to me ate a large turkey leg and proceeded to wash her hands with her beer afterwards because she didn't have the energy to go to the washroom. This is so American I stood up and started saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Big fat guy at the Grand Canyon loudly informing his family that the geological information signs were plainly incorrect because they conflicted with scripture. Also, my wife had a miscarriage while we were there. The healthcare system kinda worked okay for us because we had travel insurance to cover the costs of all treatments. But I would sure hate to be poor in your country. When I went to Blizzcon and there were people with Jesus hates video game signs. Might not be the exact words on the signs but the message is the same. You put a man on the moon almost 50 years ago, yet you haven't come up with a way to make toilet doors without gaps in them. Oh, we have, it's just cheaper not to. I once bought gum in Buffalo, NY and I told the cashier I had exact change, and she looked at me square in the eye and said, Sir, I honestly don't give a crap. Brit here, rather than get the usual do you know the queen, a guy in a bar asked me what the bridge was called that connected England to Scotland. I told him I didn't know. Hadrian's Bridge. Being greeted sir, how are you doing by a young soldier in Austin airport? who just got back from service in Afghanistan. This would never happen in India, because anyone with a uniform here thinks they are a superior species and others are merely to be tolerated. The support was just pleasantly unbelievable, pure gentlemanliness, that too towards a brown-skinned foreigner. On my first day in the USA I saw someone who was at least as fat as anyone I had ever seen before in my life. On each subsequent day while I was in the USA I saw someone at least as fat again. My family made it a game to spot the fattest person each day. The backwards writing on the roads. Down. Slow. It's like someone assumed your gaze is fixed as you drive along. So you see the slow first, then the down. But that's not how people read. That's more for traffic. If the car in front of you drives over the writing. The first thing that you'll see will be slow which is more important than seeing down first. This may seem minor, but I've only been to Maine and I found it very odd that people would have opened bibles in their windows, facing out. Do people randomly stop to read them? This wasn't just one or two homes. It was many. American here. I have no clue but that is really weird. Had my first experience of the US in NYC. Disclaimer. I found it incredible, the people super friendly and a ranger's game blew my mind. A homeless woman doing the toilet on an underground train then getting angry at people for looking at her was probably my WTF highlight. Uh, doing the toilet, I love it. Visiting different parts of the US can be kinda WTF. I'm originally from the northeast, and visiting the midwest we stopped in a minute and that was a culture shock. If you want some lumber, a lawn mower, a dress shirt. A frozen pizza, a gallon of milk, a fishing pole, a toy for your niece, and a giant assorted bag of candy. Menards is your one-stop shop. At SeaWorld I got out of the way to let a person in a motorized scooter behind me see into the tank. They got up then and walked forward and took my place against the glass. I was really confused. I didn't understand that some non-paralyzed people choose to use motorized scooters. I have yet to see this in any other country. Edit to be clear guys. I'm not putting people down for using scooters. Just it surprised me since I had never encountered partially disabled people using them until I traveled to the states. When I see a motorized aid of any kind I assume the person is severely disabled. Like they have a degenerative muscular condition. 
because this has always been the case where I'm from. I thought someone was breaking cover and openly revealing that they had been faking paralysis in front of a crowd. I expected the crowd to react. It is extremely unusual for a non-paralyzed person to use a motorized wheelchair let alone scooter outside America. Edit 2. I've started a bad thing in the comments I didn't intend. My WTF came from not understanding what I was seeing at the time. The way you use motorized chairs is potentially confusing for people from countries where motorized chairs are used exclusively by paralyzed people. This was my lack of experience as an outsider and not a condemnation. I know better now. I didn't mean to add to a pre-existing debate between Americans about your use of scooters. I was once nursing a sore throat in New York and I was walking down this long stairway to get to the subway and I was clearing my throat. As soon as I got down this elderish gentleman turned around and yelled if you have a problem with me just freaking say it. I just stared at him like the awkward seal meme. It's definitely WTF America. I'm from England and studied at college in GA for a year. I was about 24 at the time. Late starter. So I was more than accustomed to enjoying the occasional alcoholic beverage. Anyway. I make the short trip to a gas station. In order to buy a six pack and they ask me for it. I willingly offer my British passport to the cashier. With a smile and I'm told that they don't accept it. WTF. It's a BP gas station. British Petroleum. Seriously pee me off. Was staying in a hotel in Boston. One of the workers there was fascinated by my accent and asked where I was from. I said island to which he replied oh cool, so where is island? I never thought I'd have to give directions to island, but it kinda boiled down to come out of the hotel. Take a left and keep going for about 4500 kms. At least 30 huge women marching into a Walmart, in a single file line. Almost all of them with holstered handguns on their belts. All of them went straight to the McDonald's, never breaking formation, never saying a word except to the cashier. It was majestic, like a squadron of fully armed Zeppelin floating by during World War II. When we entered the US at Niagara border crossing, we had to fill out some ridiculous forms. It even asked if I took part in Nazi Germany's crimes. WTF dude, I was 14 years old back in 2008. Go to catch those compulsively honest time traveling Nazis. I hop. 8 a.m. A family of four. Sitting around a table meant for six. The dad had to use two chairs. Inhaling pancakes. And just the night before I was telling my American I don't know why Americans are considered fat. When I visited the LA area a few years back. Canadians. My buddy and I needed to get from Venice Beach to downtown so we can catch the Lakers game and check into our hostel. We decided to just take the city bus over. Two separate times we drove by 3-4 guys face down with cops pointing guns at them. Seemed very America. The laws on alcohol always baffles me. You can get in a car at 16. But you can't get near a bar till you're 21. In France, you can't drink all chahal in a bar till 16 for beer and 18 for stronger all chahal. But no law against drinking alcohol if bought by adults. It's the adult responsibility. When we was in Utah, we sat in a restaurant and ordered some food, beers and whiskey. And we wanted to order a second round of beers. But the waiter told us that we can't drink that much of alcohol in an hour. So we have to wait an hour. Seriously, WTF. That's not America, that's Utah. Come up to Wisconsin, we have no such inhibition. Do you intend to enter the United States to commit a crime? Ever since I read that back in the early 90s, I've wondered how many people take yes. WTF indeed. On holiday when I was about 12 in Provincetown, Massachusetts. Too insanely fat. I mean like sofa sized, lesbians trundling down the middle of the road side by side on mobility scooters, whilst holding hands. I know they were lesbians because one of them started making quite aggressively sexual passes at my mum. Well, P-Town is the gayest place on the entire east coast. Nowadays, that's kind of the whole point of the town, or some place to visit. Just do your research beforehand, since there are several themed weeks and events that cater to certain crowds and tastes. What is something Americans should know before visiting England? 
they number their floors differently. Our second floor is their first floor. So if you are assigned room 105 in a hotel, head up the stairs. Our first floor is their ground floor. Yup, floor 0 is a thing here and it's at ground level. It's a huge steer rear type, but we're generally less effused with our emotions. For example, if you hear a British person say that something is fantastic, there's a high possibly they're having a terrible day. If you hear a British person say that something is not bad, this actually means that it is brilliant. Oh yeah any adjective above adequate is most likely being used sarcastically. They drive on the opposite side of the road in the UK, so you ought to look right first, not left first, when crossing the street in order to avoid being hit by traffic. Don't worry when exiting air bases though as you won't be deported if you can get home quickly. Never try to do a British accent. It is single handedly the most annoying thing anyone can do if you don't actually have an English accent. If I could reintroduce capital punishment but people could only be executed for one thing, it would be this. For the love of god and all that is holy, when you're on an escalator, stand to the right. I was unaware of this. And I got a severe tutting. Note that an English tutting is the equivalent of an American screaming hey jackass. Move your freaking butt at the top of their lungs. Crap, I was all for telling them that you should stand on the left and stop to compose yourself at the end of the escalator. Plus remember to stop as you come out of the tube station and look up in the all around. We like to queue. We are polite but don't do loud obnoxious yeah welcome type stuff. We can drink. A lot. Anything more than a 2 hour drive is a long way. Still remember one time I spent a few weeks in Oxford, the city, not the university to learn English as a young teen and in my country, Belgium. We never queue for buses so when I tried to get on the bus as I normally would, an older man just blurted out excuse me, miss, there's a queue. He sounded outraged and I've never forgotten to queue ever since whenever I visit England. Americans speak far louder than they realize sometimes. Try to keep your volume appropriate for your surroundings. Ancestry isn't noteworthy here. When Americans say they're X percent, insert country, we really don't care. You're still just an American to us. Also don't make the mistake of visiting only London. The rest of our country has some incredible places that are definitely worth visiting too. And most importantly, don't base your opinion of England on what you see on Reddit. Reddit does not accurately depict English culture or England's diversity. Like at all. People on Reddit tend to mostly be from very similar backgrounds and don't reflect England's actual population very well. I took a train to London from Exeter a few years back with my dad to watch something up at the IMAX cinema as per a little tradition of ours. This was about 8ish in the morning and we took our seats. In front of us were two blokes having a drink. Fast forward about 30 minutes and two couples dressed like they were out of the 1950s 60s came and sat opposite us. Their look caught the attention of the older bloke sitting in front of me, an Irishman by the name of Fergus I think, and he would not stop talking. He got yous all involved and he was an absolute delight of a man. Most of the time us English are pretty antisocial in public to strangers, but this man was so positive and upbeat he somehow made us all feel like we knew him for years. Didn't take too long until we were playing drinking games and he even pulled a bottle of port and an entire cheese board from his suitcase to share with us. Sometimes you just need to write catalyst to make us a little louder. At my first job some Americans came in for a cup of tea, or as they called it, afternoon tea, at about 3pm and wanted to know where the nearest castle is. This was in the home counties where there aren't many castles, and if there were you'd want to be arriving around 10am. I found it very difficult to explain all this as a teenager mind. So basically don't do that. England is small but that doesn't mean you can teleport from one end to the other. FFS don't think you've experienced England just because you've been to London. By all means sightsee in the capital but England and the UK as a whole are so much more than just London. Two seemingly tiny but very important things. 1. Shire as in Hertfordshire is pronounced shire, not shire. 
2. Borough or Berg as in Edinburgh is pronounced Bura, not Borough. One thing I will say is that I love meeting Americans who explore more of the country than just London. Yes it's the capital but it's just one city and it doesn't represent what England is like. There are so many other wonderful places to see, urban and rural, that have unique histories, cultures, food and landscapes. Reading the explanation of Shire and Borough was a mess for my inner monologue, lol. England is not the same as Britain. Scottish, Welsh and Irish people will probably get a bit annoyed if you call them or their country English. I usually refer to them as subjects or peasants that way you don't have to worry about geography. Service charge is sometimes included with the bill and people do not expect you to tip. It's nice if you do and English people often do tip 10% as a standard. But no one will expect a tip or be annoyed they didn't get one. Sometimes people aren't actually allowed to take tips and I'm men workplaces the tips are pooled and shared evenly. So tipping your brilliant waitress generously might not mean they get the whole thing. This. British people tip waitstaff for good service, not just for doing their jobs, because waitstaff are paid decent wages. They don't rely on tips and it's not expected. Most of the obvious stuff has already been said so I'll just say this. The term Asian is different in the UK and the US. In the US, it means someone from the Far East, i.e. Japan, Korea, China etc. But in the UK, it means someone from India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka etc. I found this varied depending on where you are in the UK. When I went to uni anyone from the Midlands or South referred to Asian as from India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka etc. But anyone from the North, especially Northwest, was always referring to people from China, Japan, Korea. Visited during mid-December once and just couldn't believe that the sun set at like 5pm and that it literally rains or is overcast all day, every day. Sometimes it starts going dark at 3pm. There are some wonderful old churches in England. At the churches are some wonderful old cemeteries. In these cemeteries there are often, by tradition, huge pine trees, but not like any pine tree you have seen before these pine trees have berries. The berries look a lot like pomegranate pods mixed with olives each with a little seed in the center. You might wonder to yourself how I wonder what pine tree berries taste like since I have never seen such a thing. You might, like one such individual, grab a few and start popping the pods and spitting out the seeds unbeknownst to me that if I had chewed and swallowed even a few of the seeds I would have been dead very quickly with likely no traces to the cause. Only to find out weeks later that what you stumbled upon is called a yew tree otherwise named tree of the dead. Their use, the wood is excellent for making bows to shoot your enemy with. As a Londoner when you catch the tube in London queue nicely, wait for people to get off first, stand on the right side of the escalator, don't block the escalator, British people are polite until you block the escalator, you'll find passive aggressive people telling you to stand on the right. These are things that really pee Londoners off about American tourist. Another rule we don't want your life story. No one talks on the tube we won't even make eye contact. Main rule don't talk about religion. A lot of English will absolutely cringe with embarrassment if that topic comes up. Oh British people think Trump an idiot. They will laugh openly about him, even though we have Boris. If you're you're with a group of English people don't mention Brexit unless you want to watch a punch up and same goes for Scottish independence in Scotland. Although we have free healthcare it is only for us. If you get ill our NHS will hunt you down like Liam Neeson and taken to get their cash. So make sure your insurance covers you and bring the details. First time I've heard that one. Row. 1. No free refills. 2. Customer service in restaurants. ETC is absolute garbage compared to the US but still the best you're gonna get in Europe. 3. Prices for food in restaurants is insane and they value quality over quantity, so serving sizes will be tiny, expensive, and delicious. 4. They talk super quiet and will be embarrassed if you speak to them in a loud, or, for Americans, average, voice. 5. Every road you come to while walking repeat look right, look right, look right or plan to be flattened. 6. People here in England are generally wonderful and have the best sense of humor. 7. 
the British middle class will crawl over broken glass to avoid conflict so, if someone cuts you off in traffic or stops just before running you down with their car it is not appropriate, as it is in America, to challenge him to fisticuffs while banging on the hood, bonnet of his car, nor is it appropriate to lay into your horn and give them the finger, it's considered being loud which is a cardinal sin here, 8. Very few things are open 24 hours here, outside of London. So if you have a 2am fast food craving, tough, and the most important rule of all. 9. Plenty of hot members of the royal family will hit on you. Do not marry into the royal family, or at least do, like, a modicum of research before you do. That way you won't be surprised at how tough the British press can be. It utterly baffled me that your television channels just stop broadcasting crap in the middle of the night and then start up again at like 6am. I don't think American channels have done that in 50 years. People really don't yell and flip off other drivers in England. Driving makes me more angry than any activity on earth. I'm extremely conflict avoidant and even I yell and flip people off sometimes. I find it hard to believe an entire nation could not do it. If someone bumps into you, you say sorry to them first, because it's always your fault you've put yourself in a position where they couldn't but bump into you. In London, natural walking pace is at Olympic 50 km speeds. Never dawdle. They keep their eggs on the countertop, not in the fridge. In the US, by law, eggs must be sprayed off to clean them if you're selling them commercially. This strips the bloom, a coating on the eggshell that prevents air and bacteria from penetrating it. If you don't fridge them, they'll go off in a few days. In the UK, they don't spray their eggs, so they maintain their bloom. Fresh, and washed eggs can keep at room temperature for well over a month. I'm American. Have chickens. Don't wash eggs. Have eaten 3 month old unfridged eggs. People here aren't as patriotic as you Americans. You won't see many people with British or English flags on their houses and cars, unless there's a football game. I moved to Birmingham recently, and have never seen so many England flags on flagpoles. They have had them up since I arrived in March, and haven't taken them down since the Euros ended. So I assume they keep them up all the time. You don't see that much down in London where I'm from. British food is actually really good, and the Indian is also very excellent. But the type of restaurants they don't have in America that I would definitely recommend trying is a proper Turkish restaurant. Not some crap takeaway but a proper place using the wood fires. Also don't call it England. Comma stick with Britain or UK. Calling it England is correct if OP is actually only going to England. Don't see the issue with that at all. Two food drink things I noticed. They tend to be comparatively stingy with water in restaurants. They seem to really love textural variation in food. A few years ago I saw Subway advertising the fact that they now have iceberg lettuce. Like, that was the entirety of the advertisement. Also, there seem to be a large amount of chocolates and such that are basically the same except for some difference in texture. I don't have a problem with water in restaurants. I always request it and never been refused. I think it's generally not served unless requested because most people drink something else with the meal. And we don't commonly drink water alongside other drinks. Don't say bless you when someone sneezes. It's considered rude. Found out when I was riding the tube. A woman sneezed, I said bless you, and she flipped me off. Wearing soccer jerseys in the UK is like wearing gang colors. Don't wear them in public. Co-worker on a business trip in the UK and was wearing a soccer jersey. He went into bar with fans from another team and got beat up so bad that he lost one eye and his jaw was shattered. This one is rarely mentioned whenever this question comes up but... Children are going to bully you because of your accent, at least where I'm from. There are loads of nice places to see which aren't London, Oxford and Cambridge. Those are great but so are other places. Try Shrewsbury, Liverpool, Leeds, Newcastle, Norwich, Exeter. LOL. I pass that as those, nice, places are great, but so are other places, such as, Shrewsbury, Liverpool, Leeds. Cities and regions have distinct accents and even cultures. Outside of tourist areas they'll understand you but you may struggle with local accents in Northumbria, Black Country, Potteries, Yorkshire, Merseyside, 
West Country etc. Fortunately, most people are polite and will do their utmost to make their accent easier for you. It's not the USA, research it before visiting and don't make the rest of us look bad. Follow their customs, rules, and laws. Don't be a Karen. If you hire a car or any other vehicle, a triangular sign with a red border and the words give way on it is the equivalent of a yield sign. If you are approaching such a sign, it's best not to sail straight through the junction at full speed while listening uncomprehendingly to the English bloke in the back seat who is increasingly desperately shouting give way, give way, as if that's going to help. Yes, so, avoid that. People who aren't serving Americans, like a barista or a waiter, typically are very curious and confounded when they meet an American. They may ask many questions and if you develop a relationship they'll make fun of you because Brits have free healthcare. They should know that, and bear with me on this one. People from England, speak English. That's right Karens, be safe out there. That we saved them from the Nazis and rebuilt their country after the war so they have no reason to give us a hard time also we won the war against the mess. They will certainly agree and appreciate you saying so at the local. Our food tastes like absolutely nothing, add salt to everything. Support your local kebab shop, edit, our food does taste like crap, I suggest you leave the UK and try actual food. That England and most of the rest of the world really don't like us very much and if we were smarter we would not keep getting involved with their problems or allowing them to use us as their dumping grounds and return all those that they send here, for everything, n, shadows. We don't really like anyone but we don't really hate anyone either. You will get relentlessly ripped the crap out of if any chav hears your accent so you may as well pretend you are deaf or mute. People are gonna make jokes about you being American, and they're probably going to have all kinds of silly assumptions based upon Hollywood and whatever other pop culture they picked up. Take it in the good humor it's intended. If an English person is joking around with you the chances are they like you. Puddings are desserts, not puddings. Cakes and pies are puddings. On my first trip to London, I was really upset that all they ever offered for dessert was goddang puddings. Took the Great Western from London to Bristol for a business trip years ago. There were places along the way where I was genuinely having a difficult time understanding what people were saying. From the US Southwest, originally. Haha <laughs> yes and places it can get really difficult and I don't think you ever really get used to it. Saying that I'm from Yorkshire so when I speak fast that tends to disappear a bit. I've heard that can be confusing for some people from other places. What's the most American thing ever that if explained to a non-American might just sound crazy? There is a place a short drive from my house that is a firearms military merchandise store in the front half of the building and in the back half. Just down a short hallway, is a barbecue restaurant. It's a magical place. When I was in Tennessee as an exchange student for a year, I was surprised by the team spirit of each high school. Like how there was a football game every Friday night and almost all of the school was there to cheer them on. That would never happen in my country. Spectating as a high school kid was mainly a way to socialize, meet up, and find out where the parties were. At least when I was in high school. Pre-cell phones, that's what we did. No one really watched the actual sport because it's rarely a quality game. Warehouse type grocery stores, Costco, Super Saver. My great uncle from Australia would always take photos and my Korean, non-soul, friends thought this was crazy we'd have so much space for a grocery store. Costco is pretty great, I went to law school there. For eternities sororities. Yes so we just join brother sisterhoods when we go off to college with secret rituals and traditions. Fraternities and sororities are also a thing here in the Philippines. It's really controversial though, so many have died from hazing. As a South African what amazed me was the competitors call each other out in advertisements. I couldn't believe it at first it seemed so unusual. The first rule of advertising is, if you're on top, you don't acknowledge the competition's existence. But if you're not on top, you highlight your strengths differences from the top company. That's why you'll never see McDonald's talk about a competitor in their commercials, but Burger King and Wendy's do. 
I remember explaining to an Italian friend that in the US we can vote and own a gun and fight in a war at 18 but can't buy a beer and he was completely at a loss for words. That's a rather recent development. It used to be 18 was the drinking age up until 1986. As a Brit, what shocked me was learning about just how huge your college sports games are. A university college football, soccer, team game here might draw a crowd of a few hundred. A friend who went to the University of Texas told me their American football stadium seats 100,000. What the actual freak? You would probably be even more surprised at how big high school sports are, especially here in Texas. I think I will use this thread and ask something to you Americans. Are the movie stereotypes of cheerleaders and football players true? Do all schools have a football team with associated cheerleaders? And are the people who join them usually popular kids? I'm only right upstairs in Canada, but I've never even heard of a school that has cheerleaders. Also, what is a homecoming dance? Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, apparently. I'm Australian and I love them. I'm the only Australian person I've heard of eat them though. I remember eating one for the first time and thought dang why aren't these popular. Hospitals buy ad space on billboards. I've never left the country, but we must be the only country that has hospitals advertising like Burger King. Yep, here, NZ, you just go to your nearest hospital. I'm from the NL and honestly I have many questions for the US. Most burning on though is why are your toilet stall doors so dang high above the ground? I don't know and I'm still not used to it. The worst is the size of the cracks between the door. The amount of times I've made eye contact with someone while sitting on the toilet is more than I'd like. I've visited the US a couple of times, I'm a South African Brit, and the TV adverts are like nothing I've ever experienced anywhere else. The crazy political adverts where they do nothing but insult the opposition. The medicine drug adverts. Good grief. Those lists of side effects. It makes the drug sound more dangerous than whatever it's meant to treat. My fiance's favorite though was a petrol advert. Gas, to you guys I guess. It made it sound as if filling your tank with their brand was the ticket to a better life. That advert had American flags everywhere, bald eagles, and the best tagline in the world by a tank full of freedom. That was a few years ago and we still joke about going to get a tank full of freedom when we fill up our car. Still weirded out about refills and sizes of drinks specific to soda, the low bar to get a driver's license. Traveling between major cities the distances are insane especially just feeling completely alone in the middle of nowhere. Sometimes it's just indescribably marvelous to be driving alone in the middle of nowhere. If my car is in fairly good condition and I am 75 miles from the nearest town, just pull over and stop to enjoy the solitude, even at night if it's clear, to finally be able to see, not just the stars, but the Milky Way too. Health insurance, premiums, deductibles, co-insurance, co-pays, out-of-pocket maximums, in-network, etc. It's an insane amount of knowledge that you need to have to make a good decision about your health coverage. And no one teaches you any of this crap. You have to go and learn it yourself on the internet. The crazy amount of food you guys serve. Like, the french fries you serve as a side and large glass of Pepsi is enough to fill me up. My girlfriend got a work visa and went to work for the summer in the US. She worked in a restaurant as a waitress and what made a great impression on her were the huge portions of food that were served on a daily basis to each individual customer. One of my Canadian friend told me that, back in 2003, when we, France, refused to take part in the war against Iraq, some congress cafeterias and some restaurant in the USA renamed French fries and freedom fries. I think it's the most passive aggressive and American thing you could have done. Plus. Fries come from Belgium, not France. Proms and homecoming dances I don't know if they are one and the same or how many there are. Americans make such a huge deal out of it that pass around awards for whoever is the prettiest dance is the best. The whole thing just seems so bizarre and out of this world to a European that I have to ask if any of you can explain in detail why they are the way that they are lol. 
We just organize with the teachers some school parties that are usually in big clubs once or twice a year and they turn a blind eye on alcohol because you guys are also really strict on alcohol until you're 21. Another kind odd thing is when you guys are allowed to drink you just go all over the news in Mediterranean places for causing trouble. I studied in Chicago for a month at 17. And I was so confused as to why all your bread was sweet. I get migraines if I eat too much sugar and I basically lived off of chips, mac and cheese, and the salad bar in our accommodation. On the 4th of July I just ate a bowl of carrots dipped in ranch dressing as I didn't eat meat at the time. It still had enough sugar to knock me out. Also your painkiller bottles are huge. I had to buy ibuprofen and the smallest bottle was like 100 pills. I haven't finished it yet and that trip was 2 years ago. Complimenting strangers. But I like it though. Do you guys in the US get paid holidays? We have weeks of paid holidays. Not including the bank holidays. I saw someone saying that in the US they practically work perpetually for their company with no time off. How? I was on a night train in Italy from Rome to Venice. I explained beef jerky and he asked me why we would do that to steak. And I was like blame the cowboys. To preserve me during trips that lasted weeks. Not an American. Brit. But when I watch live streaming Premier League on American channels. All legal of course. I honestly find the advertisement so strange. They are so. Aggressive. I don't know if that's the right word but honestly it's a fun experience. The car adverts are the best. You should see local ads. They're hilarious. I don't care if someone said it already. I'll repeat it anyway because it's so important. That gap next to the doors in toilet stalls. I don't want eye contact with strangers when doing my thing. I live in a right to hire state. That basically means that, with a few exceptions, my employer can fire me at any time without reason. With zero notice. It is possible to get a job with a contract, but those are rare unless you have a very high paying position. This is quite common in the USA from what a lawyer told me. I've read stories on this site of other places that are not like this. I always thought this was normal before. In Sweden, one three months notice period both ways is the standard. Both employers and employees like having some time to find a replacement. Mowing the lawn. So, I told my friend in China I had to mow my lawn. She had no idea what it meant. I went on to say, you know, a lawn mower, it cuts the grass. She looked at me like I was crazy. She didn't fully understand until I linked her some videos of folks getting their lawn. Perhaps not the most American thing but not many PPL that have gardens or yards to maintain so she had never seen or used a lawnmower in her life. I was thinking dang I had to mow the lawn as part of my chores just about every week growing up. Lawns are common in America because we have the space. I believe the modern idea of a grass lawn started in France as a show of wealth and then migrated to the US. I honestly couldn't believe people had to worry about calling an ambulance because of the fees. Like, WTF, imagine being seriously hurt or sick and hesitating to call an ambulance and having to think about how much it will cost. Can't imagine it. Imagine being diagnosed with cancer and calculating if it would be better for your spouse and kids if you just died. Someone PLZ explained the imperial system and how TF Fahrenheit works. I would like to not set my house on fire setting my oven to 360 degrees. The way American public schools treat children with disabilities is bizarre. I was fortunate enough to be in district that had a separate section for children who couldn't function well in a traditional classroom. However, the expectations were so low as to be laughable. I had a math class with a great teacher but only me and one other kid attended while everyone else was god knows where. During the last few weeks of that class all we did was watch movies like LOTR. Nobody ever checked in on us or questioned why this was happening. It's a shame really. The kids I met were smart and clever but didn't really get the support they needed. Some just had anxiety and couldn't handle test taking. Others, like me, simply needed a smaller classroom size. 30 kids per class was standard at the time, but under 15 for special ed. All were just filed away under our individualized education plan and never looked into again unless there were big problems. I was split between regular and special ed in my final year of high school. 
The only accommodation I got for my regular ed classes was a little keyboard LCD screen combo to type on instead of handwriting. I aced them all because, surprise, I don't have a learning disability. I had dysgraphia and autism. After a decade plus spent in public schools, no one had figured it out why I did better or worse. All that was done was to shuffle me, and kids like me, around to be someone else's problem. I saw on a post a while ago that some people in Europe thought the big yellow school buses were our folklore and not real, only in the shows and movies. Sorry kiddo. Run down. Barely functional yellow death traps public transportation is the standard round these parts. Firearms weapons? It's actually starting to become a very touchy subject here in the states. But when I was younger we could go to school with rifles in a gun rack, in the back window of your pickup truck, carrying pocket knives everywhere. Even though it sounds bad or strange, a good sized pocket knife in your pocket can be a helpful tool. In Louisiana, we have drive through daiquiris, which are basically alcoholic slushies. You can also go into a Walmart and buy alcohol, get your nails done, see an eye doctor, get subway, and buy a gun, whilst your car is getting its oil changed. Couple that stand out to me as a Canadian who has traveled a lot in the US, at will employment in all states except Montana, meaning an employer does not need to have reason to fire you. Edit, not Minnesota. School starting as early as 7 a.m. some places. Teacher salaries and how that relates to the county they are in. I've spoke with teachers from both Gainesville and Long Island and the difference was stark. Matt leave being 6 weeks men are places, which is insane. What really resonated with me was how poor your poor neighborhoods are compared to the affluent areas. The ceiling certainly seems higher in the US for economic prosperity, but the floor is much much lower than Canada. School starting as early as 7 a.m. some places. I'm a teacher and this one kills me. We have overwhelming research that says students do much better starting 9 a.m. or later. But yet we keep pushing start times back. It's insane. I always wondered why in the US it's obligatory to tip people like you already got your meal in the restaurant for example and you get the check you just leave the amount in the check and leave the place what can they do to stop you from doing that? You already got what you requested right? Is it a moral thing? Or you will be blacklisted or something like that? At some point in history, restaurants couldn't pay their workers enough and asked the customers for help. But they abused this by not paying their workers enough even when the crisis was over. And now here we are with staff not earning enough and bosses placing that responsibility on the customer. Waiters and waitresses are essentially required to tip because their actual wage is very low. In my state they are usually paid $2 an hour. If you don't tip, they'll give you a glare and might even tell their manager. The only reason you shouldn't tip is if their service made you feel worse than you did coming in. When I visited Texas I did these touristy things and learned about sales tax, thought the store owner was trying to rip me off, and learned about tipping, apparently I was a bad guy not to rip or waiter, my friend made me go back in and find him and tip him, I still don't know how to calculate a tip, and drove a walmart fat people scooter and took a selfie, and went shooting at a survivalist gun range in the bush, learned a lot about the constitution there, and saw guns for sale in the department stores, and you can buy alcohol pretty much anywhere, like in a petrol station, or Taco Bell, but you can't drink it anywhere, and jaywalking laws are stupid, and I tackled a robber in a mall, and everyone told me I shouldn't have gotten involved. The security guys that came late thought I was the robber because I had a backpack, but the first guys kept then straight, and in St. Louis I got on a train, then once it was moving noticed I was the only white guy in my carriage, and the next carriage was all white people. Some guys in my carriage were cool and we chatted a lot, but one guy just stared at me with the stink eye the whole ride. And I got lost in Texas and asked some guy for directions, but he wouldn't say a word. Another guy told me he was a gang member and I was in the wrong part of town and should leave quickly. And I ate giant plates of meat for 15% the price in Australia. And I saw Denny's bacon arama, 15 course bacon base meal, including dessert and smoothies. The bacon was deep fried. Ro. Goddamn. I'm American and I'm amazed at your experiences lol. Sounds like quite an adventure. 3000 freshmen in one high school. Background. 
I went to HS in Texas during the oil boom in the early 1980s. Simultaneously the rest of the country was in a deep recession. Lots of people moved to Houston resulting in a shortage of classroom space. They ended up shoving a tin of freshmen into one school. Found out later that there were just over 3000 of us. I had a friend from Europe who could not get over the fact that I regularly drive 30 plus minutes just to go to dinner. I live in DFW. There are closer things but it isn't unusual to pick a restaurant across town just to try it. Really just the amount of driving in general was shocking to them. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.